Nebraska hoping to turn their luck around. And the Cornhuskers seeing red after a loss last week. Right now, they're turning Memorial Stadium into a sea of red. and Nebraska with my partner Chuck Long. I am Eric Collins. And now these two teams, they match up nicely. Chuck, each last two meetings, very close games. Two years ago, it was decided by three points. Last year, it was decided by one point. With both teams needing a win today, Eric, this could be another close game today. A uh, common denominator, both positively and negatively in this series, has been the quarterback for Northwestern, Kane Coulter. Well, Kane's completing 82% of his throws, and he's averaging over 45 yards on the ground. Look for Kane to be the quarterback most of the day, if not all the day, to keep the ball in his hands. Coulter played so well here two years ago in Northwestern's win over the Cornhuskers. All right, no big news at the quarterback spot. We know that Taylor Martinez won't be a go for Nebraska. Instead, we're going to see the fourth career start for Tommy Armstrong. He, he has a great future, and Tom, it's time to go back to Tommy. Taylor is is hurt again, and in the two, two games that he was in there now, two or three games, they really moved the ball well, had good rhythm in their office. Also look for Ron Kellogg to possibly get in the game today as well. Let's break this down a bit further. Let's take a look at your principal financial group edge to the game. Well, for Northwestern, it's very simple. On defense, you have to stop Amir Abdullah. He is their do-everything, all-purpose back for Nebraska. is really hot right now for Nebraska. Offensively, get back to your balanced attack, meaning run the ball first. When they average over 200 yards rushing in, in a game, they are winning football games. Get back to your balance attack for Nebraska. All right, sometimes you come to Lincoln, Nebraska. The uh, first weekend of, Nebra of November, it's a mixed bag weather-wise, but not today. 57 degrees, sunny skies, not a cloud up in the sky over Memorial Stadium. And enjoying this wonderful weather is the third member of our broadcast crew in there somewhere, my man John Jansen. John. Guys, the, the matchup I want you to keep an eye on is between Nebraska wide receiver Kenny Bell and that Northwestern secondary. Kenny Bell last week only had three. Three catches for 45 yards, all of those in the first possession. They need more production out of him. That secondary of, of Northwestern, they've been able to produce 14 interceptions. Keep an eye on Ibrahim Campbell. He has four of those. John, thank you so much. Well, there is Kenny Bell standing deep to get this opening kickoff. It's a matchup of two head coaches who have played defensively here in this conference. Of course, Pat Fitzgerald was legendary at Northwestern. Well, Bo Pelini, pretty darn good career as well. His days down in Columbus, Ohio with Ohio State. Take off into the south end zone. It'll be taken at the goal line. Amir Abdullah, full head of steam. And Abdullah is brought down as he crosses the 20 at the 23-yard line. Now, number four, Tommy Armstrong, redshirt freshman from just outside of San Antonio, getting ready to start for the fourth time now in his college career. Really a bright young future for Tommy. Again, look for Ron Kellogg to get in the game as well. They, they started with Tommy, and they'll move to Ron as well as the game unfolds. Tommy will probably play most of the first quarter. Well, in the backfield to begin the game for Nebraska, as per usual, Amir Abdullah. He's died back. C.J. Zimmerer, the fullback in front of him. And it's going to be a quick pitch and catch trying to get Kenny Bell started early. And Bell showing some nifty feet and has an for a first down pickup. I think I say he went out of bounds before the line. It's a gain of seven. Chuck, who are your impact players when Nebraska has the ball? We're seeing Nunwa is the leading receiver for Nebraska. Big play receiver. You saw Kenny, the other big play receiver on the first play. Amir Abdullah talked about him. He's their guy. And look for Chichi Araguzo on Northwestern. He's going to be taxed all day long with this option game. First carry from scrimmage for Abdullah. He pushes the pack forward enough to pick up a first down. So two plays. First down for Nebraska. Top of your screen, you can see the offensive starters zipping past for Nebraska. 
Cornhuskers averaging 270 yards per game on the ground. The two occasions when they have not had 200 yards in a game on the ground, well, they've lost both those games. Simple math, Eric. Rushing over 200 yards today. Give, your chance to, give yourself a chance to win the game. Armstrong wants to throw. Moves up. Has a man. Pass is caught. That's a new one. His first catch gets across the 50 out to the 40-yard line before he's tackled by Henry. There he is just on a little crossing route, Eric, all the way to the other side of the ball. That was great vision by Tommy Armstrong to roll to the right and find him all the way to the left side of the field. Nice play by Tommy with his vision. Terrell Newby checks in now at one of the receiver spots. He goes on a speed sweep. This is Newby. He's got the ball. And that was snipped out beautifully by the defensive starters for Northwestern. Nick Van Hoos and Damian Proby combined on that tackle. Well, if you're looking for the game between Minnesota and Indiana, go to btn.com slash game finder to see who you can find that game. You see Nebraska pacing it more with their tempo, up-tempo offense here. Something they didn't do last week, they want to do more of this week. This is a keeper. Armstrong's got it. And Armstrong down inside the 25. He runs hard. It's just a little... Green the defensive end there. Defensive end expands and keeps it underneath. That's something they did not do with Taylor Martinez enough last week. Armstrong again, quick hitter. His pass is low and looks like it's picked up by Kenny Bell. His second reception, gain of just four. Here's your auto owner's insurance starting defense for Northwestern. They have 14 interceptions as a team, and they've actually taken four of those interceptions back for touchdowns. Very opportunistic. Now the crowd gets real quiet. Into the red zone for the first time. Nebraska looking to cash in. Option left side. Armstrong keeps it a while. Fakes the pick. Oh, wow. Inside the 10. Down to the 5. Ball comes loose late. No signal as of yet. The ball came loose late. It's still Nebraska football. It's a pickup of 14 yards. There's that option element now that Tommy Armstrong brings to the table. That looks like he was down there. That they could not do as much with Taylor Martinez because of his injury. Full house backfield now. Armstrong. freshman but he sure took his time wasn't in a hurry waited for the seam to open up and put six on the board for the Cornhuskers just a great drive to open the game a great mix of play calling by offensive coordinator Tim Beck allowing that quarterback to run the ball which I believe is a staple in their offense and it needs to happen in their offense today to win the game second consecutive week in which Northwestern has allowed their opponent to score the very first time they've had the football. Pass Smith, the extra point, Tommy Armstrong. He was in a high full on this drive. Northwestern will have the ball when we come back. Football on BTN is presented by John Deere. The off-road just got roomier. The new Gator XUV A25i S4. Now with seating for four. And brought to you by... Case IH. Be ready with the proven leader. Visit caseih.com slash efficient power. And by the Principal Financial Group. The Principal Financial Group can help build, grow, and protect your financial future. Well, after a loss a week ago, Nebraska had a tough week, but the sun is shining once again here at Memorial Stadium. Here's a slide right at the side play by Tommy Armstrong, whether to hand the ball or keep it himself. Easy read for him. Breaks to the outside with his rush defenders. Nice drive, nice touchdown.
spinning kickoff into the north end zone. And it will be a touchback. Northwestern will start on offense at the 25-yard line. Senior quarterback, Kane Coulter. The numbers, 82% completion percentage. Doesn't really stretch the field with that arm of his, but he's very accurate tosser when he does decide to throw instead of run. And, and throws well on the run, too, but 82% is off the chart. Let's see if they throw a lot today. Kane Coulter was offered a scholarship to play for Bo Pelini here in Nebraska. Was strongly considering it. Didn't know if he'd be able to play quarterback for the Cornhuskers. Has played quarterback for four years with the Wildcats. Good strong run on first down. Pickup of eight yards. Take a look at the impact players when Northwestern has the ball. Well, you got to go with Dan Vitale. He's their super back. And we move him all over formation to help out with this uh, offense. Coulter throws the slant pass is incomplete. It'll bring up a third down in three. Stephen Buckley, look for Stephen now, Eric. He had a nice game last week against Iowa, and then for Nebraska, Siate Evans, he's going to play a lot of nickel and dime on the inside to cover and as a run stopper, a run defender. Northwestern don't want a three and out to begin their offensive possessions. And a flag down before the snap. Today's referee, Mike Cannon. All start offense on the 75. Five yard penalty, third down. Well, the troubles continue for Jack Kanopka. He had a couple of costly penalties a week ago against the Iowa Hawkeyes. That often happens with silent count coming out on the road, trying to time it out with the center. Both offenses are good pace right now. Here comes the blitz, picked up nicely. Another flag down on the field. Catch is made. Christian Jones close to the marker, but there is a flag down on the field. That was defensive offsides, Eric. Gonna be a free play. It appears they have enough for the first down, so if it is indeed against the defense, it'll probably be declined. Offside. Offside. Defense, number 15. That penalty's declined. Play results in the first down. Yeah, they call it on Michael Rose, making his first start as the Mike linebacker. That's a very important spot defensively for Nebraska. It's very important because they, they haven't had great communication in some of their games, and now they have a new Mike linebacker. He makes most of the communication calls. You see how it all plays out today. Trying to get to the edge. Nice little run by Buckley. Buckley turns the corner. Out to midfield. Finally pushed out of bounds by Andrew Green. Auto owners insurance. Starter. Here on offense, we've got, well, she's got a couple of Joneses doing good things. Tony Jones and Christian Jones. And Vitale expect him to possibly even carry the football a couple of times this afternoon. Coulter. Nice gain on first down for the senior, tackled by Corey Cooper. Just a little zone read there, Eric. Read the defensive end. Kane Coulter picks, takes it, reads it well. It's a nice gain. It gets down, gets his pads down before he takes that big hit. There's your auto owner's insurance starting defense for Nebraska. They have 18 sacks on the year. That's the most in the Big Ten. Option right side. Late toss out to Buckley, and he pays the price. Siante Evans, you talked about him a moment ago, read that beautifully and forces a loss on the play. He's a starting corner, Eric, but against a spread team like Northwestern, he's going to be on the inside as a nickelback, which is like an extra linebacker. He's very smart, and you've got to be able to do a lot of things at that position, cover and play the run. Nice job by Siante. So it's a loss of four, bringing up third down and six. Line that gets the 43. And another flag. No, there's no flag. Charge timeout, Nebraska. It's their the first timeout. timeout. This would be a full media timeout. 
So the Cornhuskers want to discuss how to defend this third down and six. They already lead seven to nothing. Back to Nebraska in a moment. How about Nebraska's women's soccer team winning their first Big Ten championship yesterday, knocking off Indiana. Take a look. Goalkeeper Emma Stevens. That's actually the go-ahead goal. It was a one more tie. She kicks it all the way in, one side of the field to the other, and makes it a 2-1 lead, and then a 3-1 victory, and they're being honored just a moment ago here at Memorial Stadium. They still have the Big Ten tournament to look forward to. That starts on Wednesday. You can watch the semifinals and the championship live on Big Ten Network and btntogo.com. Third down and six. Northwestern's already converted to third and eight. Coulter in trouble. Scoots out of trouble for a moment. Still on his feet. Coulter. Oh, my. That'll be the best run of the year for him. Oh. He got a first down. What a run by Kane Coulter. That's why you want the ball in his hands as much as you can, especially in those third down situations there. You got him out of the jam. As Coach Fitzgerald said to us the other day, he's playing like a man. This was a man run right here. He ran about 30 yards to pick up nine. First down and 10. Buckley joins him in the backfield. They put Tim Hanrahan in motion. Take the handoff. Coulter. Pass is complete. Easy pitching catch. This is Lawrence, his first grab of the day. And the big guys, 195 pounds on a 6'2 frame, gets inside the 30, down to the 28. Kane Coulter's the perfect quarterback against this Nebraska pass rush. He's the Big Ten of sacks. He can avoid those sacks, buy some extra time for his receivers to complete those passes. Saw that great completion percentage. That was Dan Persa-esque from a couple of years ago. Trayvon Green now into the game in the backfield. They give it to Green. And he barrels out across the 25, down to the 23. Trayvon Green tackled by Andrew Green. Gain to six. Great mix of plays by offensive coordinator Mick McCall here for Northwestern. And Northwestern's offense hasn't been up to speed the last couple of weeks. They scored just 10 points in a game that went to overtime a week ago in Iowa. Coulter keeps it. Coulter into the secondary, down to the seven-yard line. Another tackle by Andrew Green, but a huge gain of 17 for the quarterback, Coulter. Well, Nebraska's had trouble stopping the run game in recent weeks, especially last week against Minnesota. Northwestern has seen that on tape, exploited it there, Eric. Little quarterback run game. How about Kane Coulter so far? Nebraska showing blitz here. Trayvon Green stays in the game in the backfield alongside Coulter. They have been really good. They have the Wildcats in the red zone so far this year. And a flag comes down. Delay a game. Offense. Five yard penalty. First down. Chuck, you're a quarterback at this level. You're an also offensive coordinator at this level. Delay of game penalty like that, who gets the blame for that? <laughs> well, actually, it's the head coach because you have a chance to call timeout from the sideline now. Back in the day, it was up to the quarterback to call the timeout. Now the head coach can do it. He's got to have good communication and just know that that play's getting in late and be able to call the timeout. Coulter keeps it. Two-yard line, Michael Rose, the tackle. That saved a touchdown, at least for the moment. You mentioned, you mentioned red zone efficiency. Northwest is number two in the country in efficiency down the red zone. Nice move by Kane, and he tucks the ball when he's on the inside with defenders on the inside. Well, he looks good on this drive. And now Northwestern's going to be in that diamond formation. They move out of it. They move Hanrahan out to the edge, and they give it to the first man through. Trayvon Green pushes the pile. No signal yet. Touchdown, Northwestern. Don't know why it took so long. Everyone, the entire pile, is into the end zone. And Northwestern answers the touchdown with a touchdown of their own. And that's the physical part 
that Bo Pelini, the head coach of Nebraska, wants to improve on with his Nebraska team. And that was just Northwestern pushing them right off the ball. You see, everybody's too high on defense for Nebraska. They've got to get lower. Jeff Budzin has never missed an extra point. He's now 129 for 129. What offense here in this first quarter. Craymon Green, a touchdown, moving the pile. And we're tied at seven. Last time these two schools met here at Memorial Stadium, 2011, tremendous win for Northwestern. Tons of activity in the fourth quarter. Both teams combined for two fourth quarter touchdowns. Here an important one for Northwestern. This is really just window dressing. Northwestern, they're going to win it by three. A tough as nails drive took over seven minutes off the clock by Kane Coulter and the guys. And Northwestern had a huge win over a team at the time was ranked ninth in the country. Great win for that program. Obviously, they're not afraid coming into Lincoln, Nebraska with a sea of red and the noise here. Coach Fitzgerald's done a great job with his program. Shortish kickoff. It's returnable starting at the six-yard line. This is Alonzo Moore. Well, that's uh, Amir Abdullah who gets out to the 20-yard line. Abdullah was back there deep alongside Alonzo Moore. Well, Wednesday night, it's an all-new episode of The Journey. It's a show with an unprecedented look inside the Big Ten season. The Journey Big Ten Football 2013, presented by Best Buy. All new this Wednesday, 7 p.m. Eastern time, right here on BTN. You know, Kenny Bell and Kane Coulter, they have a friendship that dates back to their days growing up in Colorado. That will be featured this week. Two real big-time athletes. Both sides for Nebraska and Northwestern and Bell and Coulter. Strong force right there on the corner. Nick Van Hoos. That means it's a nominal game. Tommy Armstrong completing the pass, but not for much. Let's take a look at the quarterback comparison through one drive for the signal callers. Two great scoring drives. Nebraska took it down. Obviously, Northwestern with a great answer. And it was all around their quarterback play on both sides on both teams. Terrell Newby, the freshman from L.A. He is the eye back, and this is Newby. Runs into his own man. And he's down as he gets to the 25-yard line, a pickup of three, and into Mike Mowdy. There's that fly sweep series that Minnesota was so effective last week. Everybody's doing that right now. It's tough to defend because it expands the defender out of the box. That's the decoy, the fly sweep man. They give it to him right up the gut. Look for a lot of that to, uh, today. Third down and six. Sam Birch checks in at one of the receiver spots. He wears number nine for Nebraska. Option right side, late pitch. Not much going on at all. That was really doomed from the outgo. Colin Ellis makes the tackle after a gain of one. You always see good defensive play when you see eight or nine guys in the picture, in the screen, on TV or on film. Little option play against the Northwestern's man coverage, but you have a bunch of Northwestern defenders right there on it. Running to the ball very well right now defensively for Northwestern. So the first punt for either side, Sam Foltz comes on, third in the conference, 42 yards per punt. Tony Jones back deep for Northwestern. Real good kick, high spiral. Jones lets it bounce at the 22, and it actually takes a wildcat bounce. It's down at the 25. But a punt of 49 yards, no return. All right, let's go back down in the field. John Jansen, you have more on this Nebraska defense? Yeah, I was standing in the end zone when they when Northwestern scored that last touchdown. They were tired, and, and part of that reason is they're just tired of chasing around Kane Coulter. Defensively, you've got to pursue that ball. Kane Coulter's not allowing them to, to tackle him, not making any easy plays. They got tired down here. Not much of a rest on the sideline. They went three and out. Defense is back out there. Let's see how they recover. That's a good point by John. And let's see how, in the fourth quarter, how that plays out as well. 4.45 remaining first quarter. Coulter fakes the sweep. Instead, a little pitch and catch, getting his man out of space. That's a nice gain out across the 40. 
Corey Cooper makes the tackle, but it's a pickup of 17 yards for Northwestern. Offensive corner, Mick McCall shown everything so far. Drop back, option game, Coulter in their quarterback run game, and now a little bootleg. Stephen Buckley still down on the ground at the 43 yard line. There's your bootleg off the run game. Quarterback run game, just a little flat pass. Easy completion. So with Buckley down, we'll take a quick time out. Back to Lincoln in a moment. Stephen Buckley still being looked at close to the Northwestern sideline. Moment ago, caught a pass out of the backfield. After a nice gain, never making it back to his feet. It's hard to say, put his head down there. And both sides really banged up, not just Northwestern, but Nebraska as well. Pat Fitzgerald is playing this week without guys who normally are a big part of what they do. Of course, Venrick Mark's been out basically all season long. Dean Lowry, they like him as a young defender. He won't play. Hi. Mike Trumpy, kind of a surprise that he was a scratch, told earlier in the week that he was going to be out. And Warren Long, another highly thought of freshman tailback, is not going to play in today's game. For Northwestern, you see the guys out for Nebraska. You have three Longs on that list <laughs> that will not play. What about you, Chuck Long? I'm, you healthy? I'm the fourth Long. I'm not going to play either. So there's four Longs that won't play today. Now they're going to bring the, uh, the cart out now for Buckley. We'll be back to Lincoln in a moment. Welcome back, everyone. The delay is still for Stephen Buckley, redshirt freshman tailback out of Texas for Northwestern who's really been coming on at 99 yards on the ground a week ago against Iowa high school quarterback who's just figuring out how to play tailback really bright future but he's down on the field right now and being looked at by a whole bunch of staff and trainers and doctors there's another one of the injured tailbacks Mike Trumpy Trumpy's a guy who's been a significant part of this program over the years, but he is out. Venrick Mark is out. So this running back position really thin right now for Northwestern. Well, we already have had a couple of touchdowns scored in this one. Redshirt freshman quarterback Tommy Armstrong running it in. An impressive opening drive for Nebraska. And then Northwestern coming the other direction, and they were equally impressive, Chuck. Two great drives. Really good play calling so far by both coordinators with a good mix in the game. not look like a head injury obviously which is most important so Pat Fitzgerald's gonna have to go to the next man and you'd assume that's gonna mean that Trayvon Greens is gonna get a whole bunch of carries this afternoon Buckley had been the starter and getting the bulk of the playing time in recent weeks but Trayvon Green he's got a track record he's a junior already a couple of hundred yard games this year 100 yards against Western Michigan and Cal. He looks the part. 5'10", 215 pounds. He did score that touchdown for Northwestern on their first drive. And he's had some good, he's had a good year. He filled in for uh, Mark earlier in the year. Did a nice job. And if you just look at the depth chart right now for Northwestern, the only other guy considered to be a tailback at this point in their career is Tim Hanrahan. 
They also do have the option of putting Dan Vitale back there, which could be something that they could lean towards. And Malin Jones has spent some time running the football before. He's now being converted to a super back, but those are really the only options remaining now for Northwestern in today's game. The beauty of their offense, though, is Kane Coulter is like an extra running back for them. So that really helps with their offense. He, they don't just have a drop back passer there with Kane. So he is an extra running back, even though he's taking the snap as a quarterback. Okay, so after the first down catch and run by Buckley, it's first down and 10. Northwestern's second possession, Coulter keeps it. And he's tackled right in the line of scrimmage by Michael Rose. Good sure tackle for the redshirt freshman from Kansas City. And they're really high on Michael Rose. Again, his first start as a Mike linebacker, as a freshman. Nice job there. Coulter escapes the pocket. There's great feet of his. He's got the first down and finally goes out of bounds at the 45-yard line. Chuck, I'm looking at this defensive alignment right now for Nebraska. They seem to have guys just floating all over the place defensively. I know a guy considered to be a tight end or a defensive end in Randy Gregory, number 44. He looks like he's playing as a stand-up middle linebacker now almost. They're trying to mix it up on Kane Coulter. Straight through. This is great. Nebraska stunned right now. 39 yards for Trayvon Green. Huge hole up the middle. Looks like Northwest, uh, Nebraska just got out of their gaps. They got out of them right down the middle. Mike Linebacker was nowhere to be found. That's what happens sometimes, Eric, when you move guys around a lot. You take a chance of, of missing a gap. Now Hanrahan comes in to join Green and Coulter in the backfield. This is Green. Lowers the head, gets down to the three-yard line. Good stop by Nebraska there after a big gain. That's what you look for. See if your defense can grow a little bit. This is where Nebraska's had trouble. They had trouble against Minnesota last week in this area. So it's second down and goal. Two tight end formation. Coulter tries right side. Late pitch. Easy touchdown. Trayvon Green, his second of the quarter. Just an option off the edge out of their diamond formation. The, the, the beauty of the diamond, Eric, is it's, it, it balances your defense up. And you have no idea which way it's going. So you cannot blitz it. You can't overload a formation. You have to stay balanced on defense. Northwestern took advantage of that with a nice option off the edge. Northwestern played an overtime game a week ago against Iowa, scored 10 total points. They've already got 14 against Nebraska. We haven't even played a quarter yet. This scoring drive brought to you by Chevrolet. And it was impressive. Six plates, 75 yards, a little bit over two minutes taken off the game clock. And it started with Kane Coulter and at his feet to, get the, to keep that drive alive. Here's your option. Just reading the edge. Nice, easy pitch. Great execution by Northwestern and great play calling by Mick McCall, the offensive coordinator. Here's your diamond formation. Nebraska, just, oh. they needed the corner to stay outside there. Tim Hanrahan blocked two guys. Number one right on the edge. He's the one who got Trayvon Green to the pylon. Great block. But Nebraska was short on the edge there, a defender. So Trayvon Green now has seven touchdowns on the year, two already this quarter. And it's a 14-7 lead for Northwestern. Come out to play on the road, Eric. It's going to be one of those games. On the return, Lonzo Moore with the chance. Full head of steam for Moore brought down rudely at the 27-yard line. 
John, do you have any update on what happened to Stephen Buckley? Yeah, Stephen Buckley hurt his left knee. They have taken him off. They've uh, they've checked him out. He is stable. He is going to stay in the stadium, but he is not going to return to the game. So it's his left knee. Thanks, John. I can only hope that uh, it's not significant as we seem to have players down on the ground left and right here. Another guy down for Nebraska. This is Will Richards, former walk-on who's been rewarded with the scholarship recently. He's being looked at close to the Nebraska sideline. Looking on the right side here. Yeah, kind of got pushed over that pile late. Pile. Get your ankles, get your feet tied up, your ankles. You know, this is a Legends Division matchup. Northwestern and Nebraska. Already one final from around the Legends Division earlier today. Iowa losing a tough one. They actually led throughout a decent part of that game against Wisconsin before falling. Everything else in the Legends is being played as we speak. Well, the Michigan State and Michigan. And Nebraska needs to stay in the race with a victory here, or needs a victory to stay in the race here, Eric. And for Northwestern, it's just staying in bowl contention. They need to win to stay in bowl contention. We'll take a time out, come back to Memorial Stadium in a moment. Will Richards being helped onto a cart right now for Nebraska. He was injured just a moment ago on that kickoff return. Is he right here? Yep. And just when that play is coming to a close. around the conference we've got three finals Ohio State just a huge win on the road against Purdue they were unstoppable in the first half Wisconsin second half their offense was really good against Iowa but that was a dogfight for a while and then in overtime Illinois still in search of their first conference win of the Tim Beckman era Penn State they survive nice day for Bill Belton over 200 yards on the ground well Ohio State is hot right now Eric and you know, that's a plus for Illinois to go down to overtime at Penn State. You know, you could build something from that. Looking for that first victory, it's been tough for Coach Beckman, but he has to take that as a positive going into overtime against Penn State. This has been a really awkward first quarter just because both teams showing flashes of brilliance offensively, and then, then we've had these long stretches of inactivity because of injuries both Will Richards and also to Stephen Buckley. All right first down and 10 Nebraska's third possession real nice run trying to get to the edge of Dula gets out close to the 40. This is a kid who's really really not only powerful but quick. Let's see if Nebraska goes back to their pace offense. Offensive coordinator Tim Beck wants to get about 77 to 91 plays a game, only 60 last week. Quarterback keeper, Armstrong. And a real short game on first down. Pushed out of bounds by Tyler Scott. When do we expect to see Ron Killam? Usually in the second quarter, and maybe right before the end of the first quarter. Tommy's in a nice rhythm right now. They want to keep him in. Dula. Now close to the 45. It'll bring up a third down, maybe a passing situation for the Cornhuskers. Always try to get Abdullah the ball. He's their go-to guy. He has 13 plus 20-yard runs, which leads the Big Ten, too. You never know when he's going to hit that big one. Third down pass. And it is caught. The Numa showing really strong hands. 
and a strong lower half as well to stretch forward for the first down. That was the fear that Coach Fitzgerald told us is covering those big receivers and being physical on them because they are physical wide receivers. You saw it right there. They had great coverage on him. But a new new one made a great play. Great hands. And Blitz was on and it's well, done to perfection. Real nice penetration and the sack chance Carter. He's actually a local kid from Evanston, Illinois. That's a loss of 11. I think there was a mix-up in protection there, Eric. It's just a straight four-man rush. Should have been picked up. And yeah, Northwestern was showing blitz off the edge. It actually didn't come. Just miscommunication by the Nebraska offensive line there. Again, something that Bo Pelini has talked about repeatedly with this football team is communication. Armstrong, his pass is caught by the tight end seat and Carter. Now it's dropped. No catch. He juggled it, bobbled it, thought he pulled it in for a moment, but it's incomplete. It'll bring up third down. When you throw to tight ends, Eric, you have to be on the money. They're not real good about making those tough catches behind or in front. You have to be spot on, right on, on the money when you throw to tight ends. Amir Abdullah has gone over 1,000 yards. Second time in his career he's done that. Tight cover two coverage. They had a rolled corner and a safety over the top. So they had a man and a half. That's a dangerous throw, but that's a great play by Nunwa. Look how strong he is at the point. Catch point. Nice job. Great concentration. Going in between Nick Van Hoos and Ibrahim Campbell, it's going to be a pickup of 23 yards. <laughs> You don't, you don't coach your quarterbacks really to throw into coverage like that, but there's a nice needle throw by, by Armstrong and a great catch by Nunwa. I'm going to take a longer look here in the uh, replay booth just to make sure that that indeed was a catch in a 23-yard gain for Nunwa. Third down, they went cover two to try to get a man and a half on their best receiver, Nunwa. Well, that looks like a catch to me. the uh, quickest review we've had all season long. Right. Our referee Mike Cannon saying the replay booth confirming the call on the field. Gain of 23. So Inunwa, two third down conversions on this drive. Of, Final ticks of the first quarter. A lot of different formations are showing. They give it to Abdullah. He skips over the line of scrimmage down to the 31-yard line. That's the final play of the opening quarter. They've had fireworks for both sides. Northwestern, a couple of touchdowns by Trayvon Green. And Nebraska, well, they've got a touchdown of their own, and they're driving for another one to answer. It is a 14-7 lead for Northwestern after one period of play. BTN football presented by John Deere. Start of the second quarter here at Memorial Stadium, Lincoln, Nebraska. With Chuck Long and John Jansen, I'm Eric Collins. 14-7, Northwestern lead over the Cornhuskers. Nebraska driving, Amir Abdullah. Inside the 30, down to the 28-yard line. Tackle by Jimmy Hall. Today's Nissan Heisman history features Nebraska's and Dominican Sue. He finished fourth in the 2009 Heisman Trophy voting. Earlier today, just a moment ago, actually, he was honored right here at Memorial Stadium. As a former Nebraska Blackshirt defender. They're celebrating 50 years of the Blackshirts here in Nebraska this year. Good defensive push right there. Tackle made by Damian Proby on Abdullah. Well, this was just during that last timeout. That's the signal for the Black Shirts. And Dominican Sue, of course, now for the Detroit Lions. A bye week for them. So he's right back here among his well, the people who still adore him in Lincoln, Nebraska. We're going to get a chance to talk to him in a moment. 
All right, chance for a really long field goal. Pat Smith, this is going to be a 48-yarder. He was a perfect three for three on field goals a week ago against Minnesota. This one is going to be not good. It was wide right. That is a miss and a missed opportunity for both Pelini's Cornhuskers. Let's go down to the field. John Jansen is standing by with a man of comparable size. And Dominican Sue. John, take it away. And Dominican, what does it mean to be able to come back here and be honored as, as one of the key members of the Black Shirts 50 years? Uh, I mean, it's truly an honor. I mean, this is a huge, huge tradition, something I've always respected and wanted to be when I first got here. And it's exciting to be here. And uh, it's always fun to come back to Nebraska and especially to support the Black Shirts. Now, you were one of the finalists as one of the Heisman candidates. How did, how, how did that come about, and what does it mean to be in that position? To be honest with you, it came about with all my teammates, all my teammates around me, the linebackers, the DBs, uh, the other defensive linemen, especially just working with those guys. I owe them a ton for being able to be one of the leaders on that team and uh, be able to represent them at the Heisman. Unfortunately, we didn't get a chance to bring it home. They had to give it to the offensive side of the ball. I know you know a little bit about that, but I mean, it was great and it was an honor to be out there. Great. Thanks a lot for joining us. Appreciate it. That would actually be some good theater if we got John Jansen down in his <laughs> three-point stance and they went to add it a little bit right there. That'd be good. That'd be a fair fight. Sure. Middle number 93 immortalized here in Lincoln. What a player. Second down and seven for Northwestern. Trayvon Green does a little option with Kane Coulter and Coulter keeps himself nothing there. Coming from the corner, Josh Mitchell dives at the leg of Colton. Go back to that last field goal attempt. This hit the right upright. Yeah, look, he had a distance. Just kept drifting to the right. It's tough play for Nebraska. I like what Kane Colton's doing right now, Eric. He's playing smart. If there's nothing there when he's running the ball, he's get, getting into the ground. With the lack of running backs right now, smart play by Kane. Here comes Banderas on the blitz. Coulter in trouble. Coulter goes down. Siante Evans, Josh Banderas combined on the sack. Loss of nine. That's one of the things when you watch Nebraska's defense, I don't believe they do enough of his blitz. Here they are with the blitz finally on a third down. No protection on that right side. They, they slid, the offensive line slid the wrong way, which allowed Siante Evans to make the play. Chicago kid. Jordan Westerkamp is back deep to field this punt. Looks up into the sun, and Westerkamp, who dangerous, didn't call for the fair catch. Instead, makes the catch and is immediately tackled by Mike McHugh. 43-yard punt, no return. Nebraska's got the ball when we come back. Happens when college football's most storied rivalry isn't decided on the field. Tiebreaker, a VTN documentary that examines the memorable 1973 Ohio State Michigan 10 10 tie and the controversy that followed. It would change college football forever. Don't miss Tiebreaker, VTN original, premiering November 16th, 7 p.m. Eastern Time. New quarterback coming in for Nebraska, not a surprise. This is Ron Kellogg III. He's probably the better throwing option from Tommy Armstrong. Kellogg wants to throw a little quick out to his tight end Sam Cotton. It's incomplete. Came out with a, just an easy bootleg play out of the pistol formation. Should have been caught. But, but Ron is like a coach on the field. He does so well on the sideline. He's done it over a number of years, being a coach on the sideline and helping out guys like Taylor Martinez. He's like having another coach on the field. Very smart. Very smart player. We'll get him in the right formations and the right play all the time. From Westside High School in Omaha. Now second down and 10. Play clock down to three when he got the football. Kellogg, nice pass over the middle. That'll be a first down. He finds Westerkamp. Redshirt freshman receiver's first grab of the afternoon, a pickup of 13. Here they're going fast now. Picking up the pace. With, a, with an empty formation. Kellogg wants to throw again. His first consecutive pass is picked off. Northwest.
Western's got the football. This is Araguzo. Araguzo now with four interceptions on the year. When they're looking for a big play defensively, he usually delivers. Defensive coordinator Mike Hankwitz for Northwestern said he has the best hands on the team. They ought to put him a wide receiver. He has great hands. You can see it here, Eric. Just read a slant pattern by Nebraska. Just read it perfectly. I'm surprised that they came out. Nebraska came out throwing three in a row right there. When you have a guy like Abdullah in the backfield, especially a new quarterback coming in. And now Northwestern going to try a new quarterback. Trevor Simeon replaces Coulter. Simeon had been getting a ton of playing time, but only seven snaps a week ago against Iowa. His first throw is caught by Talley with the catch down to the 10-yard line. Now Northwestern's been used to playing two quarterbacks in their system for a long time. Just a great little throw down the sideline by Simeon. You wonder if you just want to give Coulter a little rest. He's been running around. So into the red zone for the third time today. Green spins out of a tackle. Green's got a chance. Touchdown, Wildcats. Just a missed tackle by Nebraska. It's been their nemesis all year. Our missed tackles. They had a guy right on the edge for him. They had the right defensive call. Just have to execute and make the tackle, make the play. That was a great second effort run by Green. Three touchdowns off the bench for Trayvon Green. Nice power running by Green there. Good backs will break the tackle, Eric. Extra point hammered home by Bud Zine. It's been a real nice 10 minutes and 49 seconds of game time for Green. He's got three touchdowns in that window. It's a 21-7 lead for Northwestern. Surprisingly, Northwestern's got a 21-7 lead here in this second quarter. Trayvon Green has got three touchdowns. Wow. Armstrong just late on the slant throw. He's got to be able to see that inside linebacker. That's the quarterback's job to see him. Here's the touchdown by Green, and Cooper just needs to make the play on the edge. Great spin move by Green and power running to break through that tackle. Well, be interesting to see who's the quarterback right now for Nebraska. You just saw that drive with Ron Kellogg the third resulted in the interception. You bring back the redshirt freshman Armstrong. Alonzo Moore. Starts in the three-yard line. Moore zigzags across the 20. He's met there at the 22 and brought down. So it will be Armstrong back as the quarterback on this drive for the Cornhuskers. A smart move. And just, just let Ron over there and, and, hey, sit and watch a little bit. But you'll get Kellogg back in there. He's, he's a smart player. He knows he made that mistake. I was surprised. As I said before, they came out throwing the football three in a row. They have been running it pretty well. They start this drive on the ground. Armstrong keeps it out to the 29-yard line. Araguzo jumps on his back. Decent gain on first down. In this quarter alone, Huskers, they missed a field goal and had an interception that directly led to a touchdown for Northwestern. Well, Northwestern's taken full advantage of being on the road any miscue by Nebraska they're taking advantage of which you have to do on the road Abdullah in trouble able to get to the corner and Abdullah out close to the marker to bring up third down and short Campbell pushed him out of bounds you've seen a lot of players today Eric making plays on their own there was nothing there for Amir Abdullah and he just made something on his own we're seeing a, a, a number of runs like that today on both sides of the football. Just a simple slant or a simple uh, off-tackle play. And he's just making some yards on his own. Third down, option right side. Armstrong pitches it out of Dula. Has to make his man miss, and he does. Good job of open field running by Abdullah. He gets four and the first down. Frustrating for a defensive coordinator when you have everything covered. You have the option covered. You have the quarterback covered. You have the pitch man covered. And you still can't make the play. Great job by Amir Abdullah. Special back. 
Abdullah's already gone over a thousand yards on the season with a nice run in the first quarter. Western Kansas second catch and another big gator. Pickup of 16 yards. Western Campus, a Chicagoland kid, went to Montini Catholic, was significantly recruited by Northwestern. They didn't get him. Going fast. Coach Tim Beck says he has the best hands on the football team. So Nebraska's cross midfield once again. Armstrong fakes the pitch. Weaves his way down to the 44-yard line before Damian Proby makes the tackle. Good gain on first down. That looked like Turner Gill, the legendary quarterback here at Nebraska. <laughs> he did a great job. He always did a great job of getting to his pitch man and faking it to get, and then ducking inside for yardage. Maybe Tommy's been watching some old Turner Gill film. Amani Cross now into the game, number 32 for Nebraska. He goes in motion left side, and they're going to option that way. Again, quarterback keeps it, and Armstrong has the first down. One of the things the coaching staff really likes about Armstrong is he's got socks. He's 220 pounds. Like an extra running back, almost like a, a fullback type player, but very strong. Northwestern is taking away the pitch man and making the quarterback run. A lot of defenses will do that against an option team. Make the quarterback run and so he takes those hits. 43 rushing yards for Armstrong. This time he gives it to Cross. We spun down at the 34-yard line by one of the captains for Northwestern, Tyler Scott. That was a nice play call by Tim Beck just to give Tommy Armstrong a little breather. Not running him again with the option game. There's Mike Hankwitz. His defenses have had some issues in years past, but this year, well, better. Much improved defensively are the Wildcats. Armstrong wants to throw. Has a man. Wester can't call. Just a little wheel route by Western Camp down the sideline. Wheel meaning an out and up. This is your option pass here, Eric. Off the option game. Great throw. Pinpoint accuracy right now with Tommy Armstrong. And Western Camp with a nice catch. All the way down to the 10-yard line. First down and goal. Armstrong pitches it out. Abdullah to the five. Nick Van Hoos has been hitting everything that's moving. He knocks him out of bounds. It'll bring up second down and goal. The rest is attacking the edge, Eric. They're seeing that edge of the defense not there. Timeout for injured player. Van Hoos has hit both Westerkamp and Abdullah really hard the last two times. And this, well, may have hurt himself. Abdullah is just so powerful. He has a low center of gravity. It's hard to get underneath his pads. Yeah, Van Hoos yeah. a tough guy. He's, uh, He's a little shaky. He has not been afraid to hit anything so far this afternoon, but he's going to have to leave the game. There's a lot of hitting going on in this game today. We've seen already, Eric. So Dwight White, number two, comes on and plays one of the corners now for Northwestern. Just collided with his helmet. Two cornerbacks on the field for Northwestern, both freshmen. Dwight White, a redshirt freshman. Matt Harris, a true freshman. Second and goal. Armstrong looking for something. He's going to bring a third down. With the personnel on the field right now for Nebraska, what would be a good option for them here on third down and goal from the three? Well, the option game. Listen, they've been really good with the option game all over the field. They're really taking advantage of Northwestern's, some of Northwestern's man coverage. They got everybody spread out now. And a timeout is going to be called by Northwestern. Pat Fitzgerald. <laughs> Who said he doesn't have any speed? He showed some 4-4 speed trying to get the attention of the referee and called that timeout. 
And you have no choice when you're down at that end of the field. You have to run out there as a head coach to call the timeout. You have to get out of your, your 30 30 yard line box to do that. The old middle linebacker still got those wheels. 642 remaining here in our first half. Third down and goal. Well, next Saturday, we've got much more Big Ten football coming your way. You got the Iowa Hawkeyes head to West Lafayette to take on Purdue. That is going to be a noon Eastern time start. Then Illinois, they really gave it to Penn State today, but it ended up losing in overtime. They're going to try again next week. They will take on Indiana. That game will be played in Bloomington. Coverage starts at noon Eastern. Big Ten football next week. BTN and BTN to go. All right, after the timeout, called by Northwestern. Third down and goal. Abdullah in the backfield alongside Armstrong. Wants to throw. Point of the end zone. Touchdown. Quincy and Omaha. We were thinking option. So is the Northwestern defense. Easy pitch and catch touchdown for the Cornhuskers. Just a little rub play with the two outside wide receivers for Nebraska. With the noon look going right behind him on a little wheel route wide open. That's miss extra point. It's good. The touchdown maker, Quincy Inunwa, now has eight receiving touchdowns on the year. We've got a game. Seven-point lead, Northwestern. Northwestern trying to regroup. They just gave up a touchdown. Nice drive for the Nebraska Cornhuskers. Just a double slant on the outside with the Nunua coming on a wheel route. Against the man coverage of Northwestern. That safety has a long way to go. Can't get through all the trash. Easy touchdown. Fifth catch on the afternoon for Inunua. He now has eight touchdowns on the year. They're using that body of his, that 6'2", 225-pound frame. It's been very effective in the red zone this year. Zone. It'll be a touchback. Ball will be spotted at the 25-yard line. Let's go back to Chicago. Dave Ripson's got an update on Minnesota and Indiana. Dave. I do indeed. Eric Mitch Leiter been splitting time with Philip Nelson in this game. He takes it himself for the touchdown. It is the Gophers clinging to a narrow one-point lead over IU. Well, Dave, uh, both Nebraska and Northwestern very familiar with how good Minnesota can be. Minnesota, they're hot right now. That's a good football. King Coulter back in at quarterback. He hands it off Trayvon Green. And Green sandwiched at the 28-yard line, a pickup of three, maybe four. Josh Banderas, true freshman from right here in Lincoln, makes the tackle. Both teams are staying ahead of the chains in this game, getting into manageable down and distance situations. There's only been a few long yard situations. Coulter in trouble. Coulter goes down. Jason Ankra with the sack. A huge negative play for Northwestern. Now they're in long yard situations. We'll see how they get out of it. What's happening now is the Nebraska corners are clamping down on the wide receivers of Northwestern, and Kane Coulter has nowhere to go with the football. And you cannot rely on Kane Coulter to get you out of all those jams. Those receivers need to get off the line of scrimmage to have some success in the passing game. You just saw the middle linebacker, Banderas, call out the signals. Third down and a bunch. Conservative play call, Coulter. Basically got back what they lost on the sack, but a punt will be in order for Northwestern. Finally, a defensive stop for this black shirt defense. Well, as I mentioned, the receivers are not getting off those Nebraska defenders, so that was a smart play call by Mick McCall. Just get some yardage back. Hopefully get better field position after the punt. 
So Wester can't back deep to field this punt from Brandon Williams. No pressure to speak of. And a fair catch called for. And the ball hits the helmet. It looked like of a Northwestern player. It's loose and eventually jumped on way back at the 15-yard line. I thought that hit a Northwestern defender. Well, that's a play Mohamed Cisse jumped on the loose football. Who did the ball hit off of? Oh, yeah, that definitely appeared to hit off a, a Wildcat. Illegal touching, kicking team. Ball will be placed at the spot. Illegal touch, first down. Yeah, C.J. Bryant was going down on coverage, and the ball hit him in the helmet. Number 13 in white. Yep, sure did. Those are always tough to make decisions in those close confines of punt return. Just don't know where the ball is when it's, at, when it's up in the air. Good call. All right, Northwestern still going to play defensively without one of their starting corners, Nick Van Hoos. Armstrong. Good gain on first down. He gets out close to the 45-yard line. Jimmy Hall going to be credited with the tackle. The two cornerbacks in the game for Northwestern, both are freshmen. You got Dwight White and Matt Harris right now trying to defend against a veteran receiving core for Nebraska. Let's see if they take advantage of that. There's as Matt Harris. As, they, as the game goes on. We've been told that Nick Van Hoos has gone back to the locker room. We're going to give him some tests and make sure that he is okay. He left on that last drive after a hard hit right along the sideline. Full head of steam. Nice run, Abdullah. He's got a first down. Closing in on the four-minute mark here in the second quarter. Just a nice off-tackle play. Linebacker got caught inside there. Nice off-tackle play. And Nebraska slowed it down here a little bit, Eric, just to eat up some clock and try to get the score going into halftime. Armstrong wants to throw. Nobody home. And the tight end, Sam Cotton, was in the vicinity. But Armstrong basically just gave up on that play and threw it away. Yeah, good throw away. They had some confusion with their pass scheme there, their pass route. Two receivers are close together, too close together in that route. It was a nice job by Tommy, just throwing the ball away. But Chuck, I've noticed the last couple of drives, Kenny Bell hadn't played a whole bunch. Haven't called his name since really that first drive that the Cornhuskers had to begin the game. I was word yet of any reason why he's not on the field. Second down and 10. Armstrong keeps it. Looked like he was riding Abdullah for a while, decided to keep it himself, and that was probably not a great decision. Proby with the tackle to bring up third down. Last two plays, a little bit out of sync here for Nebraska. They got to get back on schedule. What you like about Tommy Armstrong, he doesn't take lost yardage plays when he has the ball in his hand. Always moving forward. Manageable third down situation here. Showing blitz, Northwestern showing blitz. The whole idea right now is get your protection right, Eric, when you see that blitz. Play clock down to six. And a whistle. What do we have? That's going to be a timeout. Nebraska. The second timeout. This will be a 30-second timeout. That's a good timeout, Eric. They're, they're out of sync right now offensively. The last two plays weren't, weren't right, executed right. Call a timeout. Get your team over there. Hey, let's, let's execute. This is a big down for them in the first half. Now Bo Pelini's Nebraska Cornhuskers. Losing a tough one a week ago up in Minnesota. They are 5-2 on the year. Two losses, one against UCLA and one against Gophers. 2-1 and one in Legends Division play. And he has a young football team, Eric, including a young quarterback right now. You've got to stay patient, and he's doing a great job of that. He, he preached that to us the other day. 
for staying patient with his football team and staying the course. Just keep at it until they get better. Today's United States Marine Corps leader of the game, that man right there, number 11, Andrew Green, the senior safety. At an over three-point GPA, he is very involved in the community as well. Pitch and catch, Alonzo Moore makes the play down to the 35-yard line, a gain of 13. Tackled by the freshman corner, Matt Harris, but a first down. There's where timeout helps you. Just regroup, regather, let's get this thing right, and they did. Nice throw and catch on a nice little in route by the wide receiver there for a big first down. Good throw by Tommy, his best throw of the day. Nebraska still playing without Kenny Bell. Armstrong, play fake, wants a man, looking in the end zone, in the direction. Then a new one. It's incomplete. It'll bring up second down. Looking for the home run ball. Nothing but an incompletion. Third incompletion of the day for Armstrong. Just a heavy play action here going for the touchdown. After a first down, he, it was well covered. That would have been a heck of a play by a new one. It was well covered by Northwestern. Must have scouted that against Nebraska. Hey, after they get a big first down, be ready for the long ball. Nice defensive coverage. right side pitch it out Abdullah stumbles and falls wasn't touched by a Wildcat defender it's going to be a loss of a yard had a chance to get some big yards here he's trying to make a move got caught up in the turf now they're on the outskirts of field goal range it's going to bring up third down and 11 you'd like to at least get three out of this drive well, that's a good point there try to get some of it back at least Give yourself a field goal. Armstrong passes too high. He had Alonzo Moore open. Just couldn't hit him. Had some pressure in his face. Had to get rid of it a little too early. And put a little, a little bit too much air on the ball. But had some pressure. So this is going to be a victory for the Northwestern defense stopping Nebraska. Cornhuskers look like they had a whole full head of steam on this drive. And that's where you got to call a play, Eric, to try to get a, a, a running back short so you can dump it off to him so you can get that get in that field goal range. Fultz hits the nose of the football, trying to get this ball to back up inside the five and hit it just a little bit too hard. It'll be a touchback. Punt of 37 yards, but a net of just 17 because of the touchback. Stay tuned for the Buffalo Wild Wings halftime report. Dave, Jerry, and Howard be along from our Chicago studio. Scores and highlights from around a busy Big Ten on the first Saturday of November. It'll be interesting here, Eric, to see what Northwestern does with the football going to halftime. They have the lead. You always want to go into halftime with the lead. Let's see. They have Simeon now for a two-minute drill. Trevor Simeon, his only other time on the field. Series resulting in a touchdown. Incomplete pass. Trying to get it to Kane Coulter. Incomplete second down. Here's what you don't want. Good throw. You got Kane out there now playing wide receiver. But you don't want the drop or incomplete pass here because the clock stops. Let's see if they go to a run here just to move the clock a little bit. Again, they have the lead. The cardinal rule is always going to halftime with the lead if you have it. Especially on the road. And Nebraska's only got one timeout if they wanted to use it. Green makes the first man miss. Trayvon Green has the first down out to the 37-yard line. Special now, first half for Green. Now you can move. Now you can go in your two-minute drill. You got your first down. You got it off a run game. The clock's going to move. Plenty of time. Get in your two-minute drill right now with that game. Simeon's pass incomplete. Trying to get it to Mike McHugh. Freshman out of Kirkwood, Missouri, getting playing time. That would have been a two, three yard gain anyway, Eric's probably good he dropped the ball. Save a little time for your two minute drill. I've been watching this defense for Nebraska. Last couple of possessions. Haven't seen much at all of Michael Rose at the linebacker spot. Instead, number 52, Josh Banderas. Empty formation. This is where Nebraska has put a lot of pressure on quarterbacks in this situation. 
with their four man rush. Play clock down to one. They get it off. Almost picked and gone the other way. Stanley Jean Baptiste almost had an interception. Never throw the flat pass behind a wide receiver. One of the first things I learned as a, as a quarterback. Don't throw it behind, which he did, because those are dangerous. Interesting call here, Eric, on third and long with a minute 18 to go with a lead. You want to get some clock, use some clock as much as you can. Get that thing rolling. Don't give Nebraska a lot of time on the clock. Here comes the blitz. And it's a run. Simeon stumbles forward, loses the ball late. They're going to say he's down. He's down. He was down at the 41. The ball just came spilling out really late. It'll bring up fourth down. But because of the run, the clock continues to move. Nebraska has the option of calling a timeout. Which will eat up their timeouts. But that was a good call. Just a, a running play to get the clock moving. Timeout, timeout, Nebraska. Force Nebraska to call timeout. They don't have any more. Please put 110 back on the clock. He was almost out. If he kept his feet, he had a lot a of grass seconds. in front of him. Had the first down and more. Trevor Simeon is not used to running. I think he's negative one on the year in the rush game. <laughs> As opposed to Kane Coulter, who's averaging over 45 a game. Well, they've added some time to the clock. There's now 70 seconds remaining in our first half. Nebraska's going to get the ball back, but without a timeout, does Bo Pelini put Armstrong or Kellogg in a quarterback? I think you put Kellogg in there just because you don't have the timeout and you need to throw the football with only a minute 10 to go. Lester Camp lets it bounce, and it's down at the 23-yard line. Just how frisky will Bo Pelini's Cornhuskers be here with just a minute and a second remaining in the first half, down by seven. Try to put your best thrower in there. Looks like they're going to go with Ron Kellogg. Put your throwing quarterback in there. Kellogg getting ready to graduate in December. Double major, sociology and ethnic studies. He's got a three-point GPA. He was a walk-on, had to pay his own way for four years, but now in his fifth year, he's on scholarship. Great success story. And his pass incomplete. Had Seaton Carter, but he couldn't quite put on numbers. Just having trouble putting it on those tight ends. You have to, again, be very accurate with those players. They're, they're big. They're not nifty. There's Kellogg. He's got the ball nice and high. Good delivery. He needs to extend, keep that hand and go all the way down to his thigh. Looks like he was just pulling the string with that throw. Follow through with your hand. Now a safe pass is not safe. It's incomplete, which means the clock stops again. And now Northwestern with an opportunity to force the hand of Nebraska. If Nebraska throws and it's incomplete, that'll stop the clock. If they don't get the first down, Northwestern can call a timeout and stop the clock. This is exactly what you don't want for Nebraska. And again, Kenny Bell not on the field for the Cornhuskers. We have not received any word as to what the situation is there with the junior receiver. Kellogg goes down. Just a terrible drive for the Cornhuskers. If Fadio Denebo with the sack... And Pat Fitzgerald does call a timeout. Why not? 47 ticks remaining in the first half. Yeah, good timeout there with two left. You still have one to go. Smart play by Coach Fitzgerald. They're going to get some field position here after the punt. That's plenty of time with one timeout. So three plays for Ron Kellogg and the Cornhusker offense, and they go backwards eight yards. And so far, they've only taken... 13 seconds off the clock. This is a tough, tough series for Nebraska. And, and that second play, he just a little swing pass he overthrew, and that's just like a run play. He needs to complete that one, that swing pass, just to, just to move, move the ball and the clock. 
but Northwestern's in business right now. Let's see if they go after the punter. I doubt they'll go after him, although they're lined up to do it. Abraham Campbell is back deep to receive this punt, and it's a bad punt. Wow. Sam Fultz picked a bad time to kick a bad one. Sure did. They're going to spot the ball at the 46-yard line. It's a punt of 32 yards. Well, they only have about 15 yards to go to get into field goal range or solid field goal range. With, with one of the best kickers in the country. And Jeff Betzine. Western people are promoting him for the Luke Rosa Award. I right. think he's that good. Well, you have basically plenty of time. I mean, with a timeout, you do. Trevor Simeon remains in the game at quarterback. Kane Coulter in and one of the receivers. Top of your screen. Pass out of the flat. Trayvon Green goes out of bounds. That'll stop the clock. Northwestern does have a timeout to work with. It's a pick up of five. Good, smart play call. You always want to try to get the passes to the outside so you can stop the clock. I'm surprised Nebraska's not going more cover two and rolling those corners down. Here they are. They're going to roll those corners down to take away that stuff. Make, make them throw on the inside. Over the middle, incomplete. Looking for Coulter, pass too high. Let's get that ball down a little bit. They got they have Kane going all over the formation now. He's played quarterback, he's played wide receiver now, and moving him around. Northwestern's now going to bring in their biggest receiver, Kyle Prater. Junior transfer out of Southern Cal. He's number 21, 6'5", 220 pounds. He's at the top of your screen. Doesn't play a whole bunch. Showing blitz. Here comes the blitz. Incomplete. Wow. Good defense played by Josh Mitzel. Just jumped that route and laid a hit. Great job by Mitchell because that was a zone blitz. He had to cover the deep man first. He saw the ball being thrown and rallied up. See, he's covering the outside wide receiver. He rallies up on the inside receiver. He has to cover two guys for a while. That's a great job by Mitchell. So now it's a decision time. 27 seconds remaining in the half. Fourth down and five. Yeah, you give it a shot here. Go, try, to get, try to get the first down. Play clock winding down. Be and we're going to have a timeout, timeout. for Northwestern. Northwestern. The third and final timeout. This will be a 30-second timeout. These are tough decisions for head coaches here, Eric, but I, I would go for it here because Nebraska does not have any timeouts. With the timeout in the field, let's go downside uh, the field and talk to John Jensen. John, what do you have? Well, you know right now, field position is so important, especially at the end here when they're either going to try and get a field goal. They did a great job on that last drive of picking up those blitzes. You, you know you're going to, in a two-minute situation, you're going to face a lot of different blitzes, a lot of different pressures. That offensive line did a great job of picking those up. Well, they're going to punt the football, it appears. Here's just an A-gap blitz down the middle. They did a nice job of wadding it up in the middle, which you should do, but that's just a great job by Mitchell. A-gap meaning down the guards, right between guard and center. Williams' is punt is not a great one, but really didn't need his best effort. Rask is going to have the football, but no timeouts remaining and only 17 seconds remaining here in the first half. Coach Fitzgerald went to the cardinal rule of just, hey, we have a lead going in, on the road, going to halftime on the road with a lead. Went back to his rule. Really a coaching rule, Eric. National coaching rule. <laughs> it's written down somewhere. It's written down somewhere. Armstrong's just going to take a knee. That'll be the final play of our first half. Both sides, they use all three of their timeouts in the first 30 minutes. And it is a seven-point lead for Northwestern as they head into the locker room. 21-14 is our score. It's been a well-played game. Should have an exciting second half. Stay tuned. Buffalo Wild Wings halftime report 
Dave, Jerry, and Howard are coming up next. Northwestern up by seven. football presented by John Deere 30 minutes in the books and the visitors Northwestern on top of the homestanding Nebraska Cornhuskers 21 to 14 Northwestern's going to get the ball first to begin this third quarter of play With Chuck Long and John Jansen I'm Eric Collins and Chuck let's revisit some of the keys to this game that you mentioned in the beginning of the broadcast well for Northwestern to stop Abdullah which they've done a pretty good job they've held him a 3.3 average uh, only 40 yards in the first half, so if they keep it up, they'll keep them under 100, but we still got a half to play, and of course for Nebraska, the balanced attack. Now, they, they play calling-wise, they've been balanced, but they have to get more production out of their rush game when they call the runs. Kane Coulter, Northwestern, winning on this field two years ago. Cornhuskers traveling to Evanston and barely squeaking by Northwestern a year ago. Competitive games each of the last three years between these two teams. Let's go down to the field and check in with John Jansen. John. Yeah, I had a chance to talk with Fitz, uh, uh, Coach Fitzgerald, right before halftime. He said they need to do a better job of reading the quarterback uh, and, and playing off him on defense. And Coach Pellini said we were probably not going to see Kenny Bell here in the second half. Thank you, John. That is big. Kenny Bell played that first possession, had a couple of catches, looked like he may be a factor, and then was just a bystander on the sideline. That's a big blow for the Nebraska offense. Just when you get used to him as a wide receiver for, for Tommy Armstrong, you have, to, you have to get used to another guy. That's hard to do in the course of a game when you haven't been in there as a starting quarterback that long. That's a, that's a big blow to the, uh, the Nebraska offense. For Northwestern, we are told that Nick Van Hoos is done for the day. He went back into the locker room after a hard hit in that second quarter. Kick off into the end zone. Touchback. Ball be spotted at the 25-yard line. Take a look at our Quicken Loans quarterback comparison. Well, they've both been solid. Uh, really moving the ball and done a nice job managing the offense. Uh, both are good runners, and they've used that today to their advantage. And Kane Coulter has run 10 times for 49 yards with a long of 17. We actually have seen backup quarterbacks for both sides. Trevor Simeon was in for a scoring series for Northwestern, and Rod Kellogg was in for a couple of series for Nebraska through an interception. Coulter keeps it. And the senior from Denver lunges forward close to the 30. He is such a workhorse. Man. He takes a number of hits over the course of the game, gets right back up. I know he's probably sore after games, but he's not one to just go down. Being an extra running back on the field, tough kid. Litch comes off the edge. Coulter goes down. Corey Cooper, the safety from Chicago, comes on the blitz and makes the sack. Where Corey Cooper made the mistake earlier on the goal line, he corrected himself, stayed on the outside more. We're going to let Kane Coulter break contain on him. Nice tackle, though, because Coulter is quick. Very nice play by Cooper. Cooper from Maywood, Illinois, just west of the city, went to Proviso East High School. Third down and 14. And covers by Nebraska. Coulter. Dumps it off. Green out of the backfield. And Green gets out to the 30, but not anywhere close to the first down marker. Pushed out of bounds by Leroy Alexander. It'll be a three and out for Coulter in the Northwestern offense. Yeah, that's a, that's a plus for the Nebraska defense coming out at halftime. Did, did not do well in the first half, stopping Northwestern. Always want to start the second half with a three and out. If you can't defensively, they got it done. Brandon Williams, four punts for an average of 34 yards in the first half. 
Gordon Westerkamp back deep. Returnable kick. No, he's going to fair catch at the 28 yard line. Nice punt. 44 yards, no return. Well, tomorrow, Northwestern's men's soccer team going to take on the Wisconsin Badgers. Coverage starts at 3 p.m. Eastern time. That is tomorrow on BTN and BTN to go. One of the most picturesque picture at venues in the Big Ten. Lakeside Field right there beside Lake Michigan. A beautiful place. Tommy Armstrong begins this third quarter with the handoff. Amir Abdullah straight up the gun. Abdullah had 40 yards on 12 carries in the first half. Timeout for injured player. And a man is down for Nebraska. That's the left guard, Jake Cotton. He's wearing number 61. Normally he's 68, but 61 is a special number. That's worn by Spencer Long, who has an injury and will miss the rest of the year. So the rest of the season, a Cornhusker lineman wearing that 61. And now Jake Cotton's turn, and he is down injured. They may want to revisit that. There's Kenny Bell, and that's significant. No longer in uniform. We don't know exactly what happened to Kenny, but he didn't play much at all in the first half. Yeah, that's good. See what happens here. Really couldn't see it in that. These are tough, tough injuries right now for Nebraska. They're looking at his left leg, the right leg, I guess that would be. Oh, yep. Right there. Just got his leg caught up underneath a body there. When your feet are on the ground, you get rolled up. That's when you, you get the injuries. And they wear those big knee braces, and, and those do help, Eric. A lot, of, a lot of line coaches make that mandatory to wear those knee braces, and that's saved a lot of significant injuries. So one play into this drive for Nebraska. And Jake Cotton down on the ground being looked at. Here are the standings in the Legends division. Already today, Iowa, a loser against Wisconsin. That's the only team that has had a final score posted in the Legends Division. Michigan State and Michigan playing as we speak. Minnesota's got a lead on Indiana. That game being played in Bloomington. Minnesota has really come on. Yeah, look out for the Gophers right now. They are a hot football team along with Ohio State. Probably the two hottest teams right now in the Big Ten. So Jay Cotton being helped to the sideline. And they'll they, bring up a second down at five. See if they get back in the rhythm of their offense. Pass is low, but it's scooped up. That's be a clean catch. Alonzo Moore with the reception. Moore's second catch in today's game, a pickup of seven and a first down for the Cornhuskers. Only two catches coming into the game, so again, it's hard for a quarterback to get used to new guys. But Tommy has to do this on the run now. Armstrong in trouble. Oh, makes a couple of guys miss. Gets out across the 50 to the 47 yard line of Northwestern. Finally brought down by Ibrahim Campbell, but a gain of 13. That's the beauty of having a quarterback that can run. Just a simple quarterback counterplay with a pulling guard. Waits for his blockers, sees the hole, takes advantage of it. Hard to defend everything. Will Hampton is now the injured player down on the field. Senior defensive tackle from Houston. This has not been a clean game in oh. terms of injuries. 
Northwestern has already lost Stephen Buckley in the first half, and now Will Hampton down on the field. His feet are off the ground, so he won't get the you know get the injuries with your knees when your feet are off the ground. So I just got the wind knocked out of him. He'll be back. Sean McEvely replaces Hampton on that defensive line for Northwestern. First down at 10. Nowhere to go. Nice hitting there. Middle of the line. Damian Proby brings down Amir Abdullah. Let's go down to John Jansen. John. You know, Nebraska's already playing with one guard out. Now they lose another one. It becomes imperative that that communication up front uh, right now, they're doing a good job, but they're also being aggressive right now. They're letting those guards get their feet underneath them, getting a rhythm by running the ball. We'll see how it goes here in the second half for them. Pitch out right side, Abdullah. Can't get to the edge. You know, we have a new center in the game right now for Nebraska. Mark Pellini. We expected Mark Pellini to play. He's a nephew of head coach Bo Pelini, but Pelini is number 56. He's the new center. Cole Pensick has moved to one of the guards. So whenever you change your center, that's always significant just because he's the first guy to touch the football. Big third and long here. Here comes the blitz. Armstrong. Miscommunication. Right. And John Jansen made a great point on the sideline. When you have new linemen in there, and especially a new center, a center makes all the mic calls. He has to direct the line towards the mic linebacker, make sure he's blocked first. And there's a lot of communication that's involved there. And if you have new line and new center, it can, it, it can take a while now for this offense to settle down to get in rhythm. Armstrong struggling as of late, just two for his last six passing the football. McHugh back to field this punt for Northwestern. Instructing everyone to get away from the football. Takes a wildcat bounce and it'll be downed close to the 25 yard line. So both sides not able to do much of anything offensively to begin this third quarter. Well on Wednesday it's a new episode of The Journey Big Ten Football 2013 presented by Best Buy and it features the friendship between Northwestern's Kane Coulter and Nebraska's Kenny Bell. Also a look at the Michigan State Michigan rivalry through the eyes of Taylor Lewan and longtime Wolverine equipment guy John Falk. That's Wednesday November 6th 7 p.m. Eastern only on BTN. Welcome back everyone Lincoln Nebraska 21 14 Northwestern lead over the Cornhuskers Nebraska Student Union Northwestern really likes coming here not only have they won recently two years ago but Pat Fitzgerald saying the environment just incredible he said the fans couldn't have been nicer I don't know if that's a good thing or bad thing but he was very happy with the reception that he received when his Wildcats not only came here but won on the road against a ranked Nebraska team in 2011. Trayvon Green with the first tackle, first down run. Put a little ice on the knee there. In the middle of the game. Jake Cotton left guard leaving during the last series offensively for Nebraska. Another carry for Green. Has enough for a first down. Getting a good pace in their offense. Again, a couple of runs to start off this drive. Last four drives for Northwestern punch. resulted in nothing but a whole bunch of Brandon Williams. Well, Trayvon Green, they're standing behind King Coulter, has now gone over 100 yards. His third 100-yard rushing day of the season. Coulter keeps it. He's stoned. No gain. Jason Ankra. And they like Ankra. They think he's going to be a future leader on this football team bright spot on this defense getting better and better saw it there Eric. nice play by anchor there just squeezing the line of scrimmage again they stand up under the defensive ends Randy Gregory incomplete trying to get it to the super back by Talley Nebraska had a blitz there that made Kane Coulter throw it earlier than he wanted Made him, uh, wasn't an accurate throw. Good, good blitz call. By Coach 
John Papuchas, the defensive coordinator for Nebraska. Got him in a third and long, which is what you want defensively. Man coverage on the outside. Northwestern has not converted on their last five third downs. Let's see if they work to the outside on a wide receiver against man coverage. Coulter has a man pass too strong. Would have taken a perfect pass to Christian Jones, and the pass a little bit too high for Jones to bring in. A little too high, but that was a pretty good throw there because he had pressure in his face. Nebraska brought the blitz. It was a man blitz. Put it, put it in a pretty good spot right there. He's got to come up with that play. That was a good throw. Just a little corner route on the number two defender. Another punt for Williams. Wester Camp calls for the way fair catch and makes it at the 26 yard line. 33 yard punt, no return. Second possession of the second half for Nebraska when we come back. BTN goes wherever you want it with BTN to go presented by Auto Owners Insurance. Watch every game live. BTN to go is now available to all major subscribers who receive BTN through their cable, satellite, or video providers. To learn more, visit BTN2Go.com. Also available in the App Store and on Google Play. Fan up fans and download today. Tommy Armstrong Jr. once again will be the quarterback out of the shotgun. Play action, pass complete, third catch of the day. Second of this second half for Alonzo Moore. Northwestern still playing without Nick Van Hoos at one of their corners, so it's been Matt Harris, the true freshman, and Dwight White, the redshirt freshman, at the quarterback spots. You have a young quarterback try to get to the single receiver in the passing game as much as he can, which they just did. It's a lot easier for a young quarterback to do that. Armstrong thought about handing it off to Abdullah, kept it, and then pays the price for that decision. Tyler Scott, senior captain, gets him for a loss of five. But Tyler, 30 tackles, eight tackles for losses, and five sacks coming into this game. He's been a force for Northwestern. Second down. Pass complete. Inunwa still on his feet. To make this a third down and manageable. Ball gets ripped away. But he was down. Forward progress at the 45-yard line. A pickup of 10. Getting back to a movement pass. Moving Tommy Armstrong out of the pocket a little bit on a little half roll. With a, with a little stop right on the outside. Very safe throws. There they are trying to rip it out. And that's the oh. eight. first man tackles, second man rips. And that's what they're taught defensively. And that they got it out. Third down and five. Man coverage, straight up man coverage. DB's right on the nose of the receivers right now for Northwestern. Armstrong floats it up for Birch, and that one's, I didn't have much of a chance at all. When you talk to offensive coordinator Tim Beck, those are spot throws, those little corner routes. You throw to a spot and trust that the receiver will get there. This is going to be the 10th punt in the last two quarters of play. This game is ground to a halt. A little sloppy on both sides right now. A lot of that is youth, though, Eric. Mike McHugh back deep for Northwestern. High spiraling kick. Fair catch called for and made at the 13. Dangerous play by McHugh. All right, who's getting excited for some hoops this coming Friday night? Basketball returns to BTN with a doubleheader. First, Bull Ryan's Badgers taking on St. John's. Then Nebraska opening up the new Pinnacle Bank Arena right here in Lincoln against Florida Gulf Coast, a team that went to the Sweet 16 a year ago. Coverage starts at 7 Eastern Friday night right here on BTN and BTN to go. This is a scrimmage play to Pinnacle Bank Arena. This is going to be just a terrific venue for Big Ten basketball. And red versus white game a couple of weeks ago. And maybe a game change right in downtown Lincoln. New facility opened up for both the men and women's basketball team here in town. 
Trevor Simeon in at quarterback. He hands it off. Trayvon Green. Good run. Out close to the 30-yard line. Finally tackled by Andrew Green. Pick up a 15. You got to love Green today, Eric. He is really making it happen. A great hole by the offensive line. And then he made the next defender miss. He's really talk about rhythm right now. Running backs need to get into rhythm too, and he's in rhythm today. Nice, nice run by Green. Third 100 yard day this year. Simeon's pass out of space, caught, but immediately dropped by Siante Evans. Good tackle by Evans. This is why that position is so vital. And he is the, he's shedding a blocker, and then he makes the tackle on a bubble screen. That is very difficult to do. Great play by Siante Evans. Northwestern playing with a new left tackle. Shane Mertz in, replacing Jack Kanopka. Kanopka is questionable as to whether or not he can return. Second down and 11. Picked off! Going to be a touchdown! It is Avery Moss for six! Western. We're pulling away from big time. Just a great play by Moss, though, Eric. Not much you can do as a quarterback here. You see a guy open, you throw it. He just made a great play. Moss just made a great play with great hands. It's up to that offensive tackle on the right to get his hands down on the block. That was old school. A number 94 defensively scores the touchdown. A number 94 on special teams with the extra point in Pat Smith. And we're tied at 21. Yep. The offensive tackle to the right, it, he's in charge of cut blocking or getting the hands down of the defensive lineman on quick throws. Again, the, court, the quarterback's trusting him to do that, and when it doesn't happen, you'll see the tackle here on your left-hand side. He's trying to cut, but he didn't get him down. And when you don't get him down, this is what happens. So that's not on Simeon. That's the tackle getting that, those hands down in order to make the, the quick throw. So the first turnover of the day for Northwestern results in a touchdown for Nebraska. They had good rhythm running the ball. Why they went to the pass there, maybe just as a changeup for Simeon in the game. Stay with your run game. Look at the right tackle, the left down here. He's trying to cut Moss, but Moss is athletic. Sheds the block, gets his hands up in the air. And when you don't get the defensive lineman down, that's what happens. Harris is going to bring it out of the end zone. And that was a mistake. Freshman, instead of having the ball at the 25-yard line on the touchback, instead gets the ball out to the 18-yard line. When you talk to both coaches, they always mention little things are getting us right now. Little things are bothering us right now. But what happens is a lot of little things add up. It becomes a big thing on your football team. And that's why you struggle to win football games or to stay or to get consistent as a, as a team. Northwestern again going to have Shane Mertz as the left tackle, the right tackle. Paul Jorgensen. It was Jorgensen who wasn't able to get the hands down of Avery Moss a moment ago. There's Shane Mertz. He's the left tackle replacing Kanopka. First down and 10. Coulter trying to calm things down. Calls his own number. Has the first down. Pushed out of bounds at the 30. And that's their bread and butter is Kane Coulter. And I believe when they put Simeon in the game, it's probably to give Kane a rest. Nice pull by their guard and tackle out in front. Gives Kane a little crease, and that's all you need to do with Kane Coulter. But when you play quarterback like Kane, you need a little rest during the course of the game. That's why they're putting in Simeon, just to, just to give him a breather. Green tackled by the corner. Gene Baptiste. Let's go to Dave Repson for a studio update. 
Thank you, Eric. Minnesota having its way with Indiana. David Cobbs over 100 yards rushing. It is 35 to 20 in favor of the Gophers in the third. Thanks, Dave. We've seen the script before. Jerry kills teams, and I know Jerry killed not working the sidelines right now, but at Southern Illinois, at Northern Illinois, this guy builds programs. Done it every time in his third year. That year three is magical. Coulter on second down. why he's the leader, the captain, and playing in that nickel package where he's on the inside as a linebacker because he can run support as well. Plays the run very well. On a blitz, stays patient. Big play for the Nebraska defense. Gets him in the third and extra long. Four tackles for losses today for Evans. And Coulter again. Caught close to the line of scrimmage. Maybe a two or three yard game. Randy Gregory runs him down. Tough series for Northwestern. In a game like this, all it takes is one little thing. The Moss interception for a touchdown. Sparks your football team. Now the Brax is fired up on defense. It just takes one moment. Wester camp back deep. This punt going into a slight breeze. Fair catch called for. Wester camp makes the play. Nebraska has momentum. Now they'll try and get the lead. A 21-21 tie. Siante Evans in this black shirt defense starting to play a bit here in the second half. For the first time in a while, some excitement here at Memorial Stadium, Lincoln, Nebraska. Cornhuskers and Northwestern tied at 21. Looking for a big play right down the middle. It's incomplete. Armstrong can't find his fullback, Zimmerer. He needed to wait a little bit longer. Some, some passes you want to throw on time, but there's certain passes you want to wait just a second especially with fullbacks coming out of the backfield to throw that ball. Tommy threw a little bit too quick. They have field position right here. You want to take advantage of it in a tight game. Armstrong still has the football. It'll bring up third down. Pick up a four. Chance Carter with the tackle. Northwestern still playing without Will Hampton, who left a couple of possessions ago due to injury. Now the Wildcats bring in their pass rushing package. They'll convert their defensive ends into defensive tackles and bring in a couple of speed rushers, Deontay Gibson, into the game. Danabo almost had Armstrong the ball and picked off. Northwestern's got the ball back. Dwight White with the interception. Just an errant throw by Tommy. He had pressure. He stepped up in the pocket nice, but when you step up in the pocket, you're too late to throw to the outside like this. He didn't see the underneath defender there, but when you step up in the pocket, he's out of rhythm right here. There's no rhythm. He needs to become the human check down, and he runs the football. When you have to triple hitch, Eric, I always tell quarterbacks, if you have to triple hitch, you need to run the football and not throw it. Every time we've had a turnover in today's game, it has directly resulted in a touchdown. First down and 10. By Tally in motion in front of Colton. Wrap around handoff to Green. Great spin move. Trayvon Green out across the 50. This kid has been terrific this afternoon. That was a great play and great vision by Trayvon Green. Nebraska had a full blitz on that side. It was unblocked blitz, and Green made a miss. Coulter designed rollout right side. Throws on the run, incomplete, looking for Vitaly. If you're just joining us, Trayvon Green really the only option as a tailback for Northwestern. Stephen Buckley was injured in the first quarter, has not returned. 
But the ground game has been really good so far because of the way that Green has stepped up. Yeah, and, and he stepped up nice. You can see they've only had a, 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 a Ofo in this half, basically, on third down. They haven't had a third down conversion in a while. But they are doing a nice job with Green and Coulter both in their game plan. It'll bring up a third down for Northwestern. Those where Northwestern struggled as of late on third down. And they're getting close to four down territory. They're going to bring in Trevor Simeon here for this third down and seven. So a new quarterback comes in for the Wildcats. Blitz is on. Pass is caught, but it was bobbled. I don't think this is going to be up for a first down. Cameron Dickerson looked like he had enough ground for the first down, but when he bobbled it, by the time he corralled the football, he was behind the sticks. So it's going to be short. I, I think the route did not get past the sticks well enough. You have to get two yards past the sticks, Eric, to be sure. So if you have a five-yard route, and you, sometimes you have to take a five-yard route and go to seven. They're going, they're going for it here on fourth down, being in four-down territory. Coulter in the backfield next to Simeon. And that's why they went to the short pass, knowing that they wanted to go for it on fourth down. The ruling on the field is the receiver caught the ball but bobbled it before gaining possession. That's where the spot is. That play is under further review. That's what I mentioned a moment ago. It, he had the ball, looked really close to the first down marker, but then the bobble didn't have possession until he was well, be well behind it. How about the confidence they have in Trevor Simeon? Well, I guess his route's okay. He got his hands on the football at like the 37 or the 38 yard line. Right. But by the time he actually the had it, on the field was confirmed. He was at the 40, so it was. It was a good spot. Good spot. How about the comments they have in Trevor Simeon? First two downs with Kane Coulter. They bring him in on a crucial third down. And, you know, coming off the bench like that, Eric, as a quarterback, oh, I got to come out and convert a third down? That's not easy. You're not really in rhythm anyway during the course of the game because you haven't been in there a lot. Northwestern continues to play without Tony Jones. We haven't been told exactly what Jones' injury is, but it's questionable as to whether or not he were charge of this game. Fourth down and three. Showing blitz on the edge down here. Walking their defensive line around, trying to confuse their blocking scheme. I don't know if Coulter's going to get this now. Now a timeout for Nebraska. Charge timeout, Nebraska. Well, first, this will be a 30-second timeout. Okay. Let's see what they have. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten men. You don't want to get caught on the fourth down with ten men. Good timeout. So a timeout for Nebraska. It Fourth down and three. And now what will Northwestern do? What now they're going to punt the football. Right. What happened there was when, when Simeon was out there, they had a different personnel group on defense. And they threw Kane Coulter out there at quarterback. And they wanted to get another personnel group. So that's why they were caught with only ten men. So the punt unit on once again for Northwestern. Williams. Another fair catch called for by Westerkamp, but he makes it staggering at the 13-yard line. Northwestern's punted eight times the last ten times they've had the football. The punting's been good today, though. Solid punting. Here's our John Deere Gator game-changing performance. Avery Moss, third quarter interception for a touchdown to tie this game at 21. Definitely the game changer. Still Tommy Armstrong Jr. at the quarterback spot. Haven't seen Ron Kellogg here in the second half. Abdullah out in space. Still on his feet. Out 
to the 24-yard line. Campbell with the stop, but a gain of 11. There's your workhorse, Abdullah. You have to get him in the rhythm of this game, going out of this game right now. He hasn't, he hasn't really been in rhythm yet. Mark Bellini still in the game as the center. Junior from Youngstown, Ohio. Working on a shotgun snap to Armstrong. First down and 10. They're going to feature Abdullah into the secondary again. Campbell with the tackle, but out to the 40-yard line for Abdullah. 15 more yards. Simple stretch play that everybody runs over the left side, creating some space in that defensive line. That was all offensive line right there for Nebraska opening that hole. Now Abdullah going to get a blow after 26 yards, his last two carries. Cross is the tailback, and Cross has got the ball. Lunging forward to the 45. I haven't, haven't seen much of Cross, but he is their leading scorer. He has nine touchdowns on the, on the uh, year. John, you notice anything up uh, in that pit there for Nebraska? Yeah, right now they're getting great movement up front because they're meshing well on their combination blocks. They're getting hip to hip, getting moving on that down lineman before they get off to those linebackers. Pass is complete. Moore has been featured quite a bit this afternoon with Kenny Bell sideline. That's a gain of nine. To John's point, Pelini, the center, is doing a nice job getting the calls right, get, getting the blocking schemes right, and they're meshing well together. Nice throw by Tommy off his back foot with pressure in his face. Under a minute left to play here in this third quarter. Cross. Had a hard time getting started there. Leans forward a gain of two. Eric Guzzo staying with him and brings him down. That was a great penetration by the Northwestern defensive line. Getting off the ball faster than the Nebraska offensive line. A couple of boyhood friends facing off against each other. Kane Coulter and Kenny Bell both knowing each other growing up in Colorado. Sam Bush with that catch. Six seconds remain in the third quarter. Nebraska getting their offense in chunks right now. I like the play calling from offensive coordinator Tim Beck right now. It's keeping things simple for Tommy Armstrong. Just a little roll out, quick out. Well, that's going to do it for the third quarter of play. Nebraska, they get an interception for a touchdown to tie this game at 21. Kane Coulter, Kenny Bell, two childhood friends who will come on top when quarter number four starts. John Deere getting ready for our fourth quarter. 21-21. Northwestern and Nebraska. 331st consecutive sellout here in Lincoln. First down and 10. Armstrong out of the gun. Fakes to Abdullah. Quick hitter. Passing complete. Looking for more. Let's go to Dave Revson for a studio update. There, getting closer in Bloomington, Tevin Coleman, who scored in every game this year, goes 55 yards for the touchdown. And all of a sudden, the Hoosiers have made things interesting. 35-27 Gophers early four. Thank you, Dave. Yeah, that offense for Kevin Wilson, usually pretty good there. Indiana Hoosiers among the leaders in the country in what they can do offensively. Second down and 10, design quarterback draw. There's a flag down on the field. He gets the first down if it holds up. Should mention we have not seen a penalty on Nebraska all afternoon long. Yeah, there's not been a lot of flags at all today. Well Holding. played, Offense. clean game. Number 74, 10-yard penalty, replay second down. There he is right here. Keep your hands inside. Oh, got his hand. Hold it. Working against Sean McEvely. That's the first penalty for either side since the first quarter. 
when they it's come a out, costly one. When they come out that fast, it's usually a hold. Well played game and, and from that front. Andy Janovich in as the fullback in this formation. Armstrong wants a bunch. Looking deep. And no one can't make the play. Knocked away. Campbell and Harris on the coverage. That was well played. Good coverage for Northwestern against Nunwa, who's a big time, big play receiver for Nebraska. Good play call. Just throw it up to your big man. See if you can make a play. Now, one thing Nunwa should have done there is get way up with his hands. He's waiting for the ball. He needs to get his hands up high and catch the ball at his highest point. That's just a, a, coach, a, a fundamental error on his part. Matthew Harris getting some experience as a true freshman. That is rare for a Northwestern defender over the years. Third down and 20. Cornhuskers just trying to get something back. Armstrong throws into a crowd. It's intercepted. They intercepted Northwestern football at the 20. Colin Ellis with the interception, his third of the year. Tommy with a drop and roll against the pressure. You have so many bodies down in there. And I always tell quarterbacks this, if you can run as far as you can throw it, run the football. He had grass in front of them. He could have made the same amount of yards just by running as he would have by that completion. And, and Tommy can run the football. Third interception of the afternoon for Northwestern. Kane Coulter back in at quarterback for the Wildcats. All tied up at 21. Green bent backwards. Just an awkward collision. Vincent Valentine, among others, in on that tackle. And hopefully Green's okay. Well, that was a scary tackle. Timeout for injured player. Northwestern's already lost wow. Stephen Buckley. Oh. Coach Fish is hot. Let's see what happens here. He's got his pin. I don't know what you do differently if you're Nebraska. I mean, they're just trying to tackle him. He just got caught on the pile with his legs underneath the pile. I know Coach Fitz is mad, but there's nothing Nebraska can do about that. Well, at least for one play, and Northwestern's right. hoping it's only for one. The Wildcats one. are going to have to go to, I'm assuming, their sixth string tailback. Venrick Mark, not going to play. Mm. Mike Trumpy, not in uniform. Warren Long, not in uniform. Stephen Buckley knocked out in the first quarter. And now Green being knocked out. So it's anyone's guess as who could possibly be the tailback now. The only other possibilities on the roster Number one, Tim Hanrahan, who's never carried the football this year. And number 20, Malin Jones, who's being converted to their super back position, which is more of a tight end than anything else. It is going to be Hanrahan coming into the game. Junior out of Frankfurt, southwest suburb in the Chicagoland area. And Coulter keeps it. defensively and you look at that depth chart for Northwestern you just got to assume that Coulter is going to be the only person running this football. You zero in on Kane Coulter right now and he's he's limping right now coming out of that tackle. He's going to have to become the workhorse in order to win this game. And now Coulter is going to leave the field replaced on a third down and six by Trevor Simeon. Really hard to come in as a quarterback on third and six, but they're used to it at Northwestern. And movement. Now you're third and 11. False start, offense, number 57. Five yard penalty, third down. That's Matt Frazier. Doesn't start, but he was expected to alternate with Ian Park at one of the guards. John, what's the sound like down there on the field right now? Well, it's definitely loud. We're right by the student section in the band. As an offensive lineman, you got to keep an eye on that ball. See it out of the corner of your eye. Move when it moves, because you're not going to hear anything. Third down and 11. I know Coach Fitzgerald likes to take 
Riss and Gamble's got to be careful here. It backed up in your own end. Simeon has time. Now flushed. And he throws behind his receiver. Looking for Christian Jones. Receivers have to work harder for your quarterback. He didn't have anybody initially because everybody was covered and not working hard enough. Not every pass is going to be, be on, in rhythm and on time. As a wide receiver, you got to work. It's actually a good job by Simeon to get out of the pocket. Just made it keep that throw inside a little bit more. Keep your shoulders going towards the line of scrimmage, not away from, not to the sideline. Ninth for a more accurate throw. Ninth punt for Brandon Williams. Westerkamp tackled immediately before he can get to the 40-yard line. Mike Jensen with the special teams tackle. When we come back, Tommy Armstrong at Nebraska back on offense. Next Saturday, another action-packed day of Big Ten football kicking off. The Hawkeyes heading to West Lafayette to take on the Boilermakers. Then some offensive fireworks in Bloomington. The Illini visiting the Hoosier. That's next Saturday. Coverage starts at noon Eastern on BTN and BTN to go. Tommy Armstrong's thrown a couple of picks here in the second half. In total, three interceptions by Nebraska quarterbacks. Abdullah! Nice game for the junior tailback. Pushed out of bounds, but not before a huge gain on first down. It's a pickup of 26. Got small in the hole there. Had his hand on the ground. Kept his balance. Made a nice gain with not much of a hole there. That's what Abdullah can do for you. Important that they do that in this drive. Give him the football. Turn around and another handoff to Abdullah. Ragged down to the ground, but not before he has another good game. Down to the 30-yard line. Pick up a five. Chance Carter with the tackle. And Abdullah's going to get a blow. They replace him with Amani Cross. When you have a quarterback that's thrown a couple of interceptions, especially the last one, you're on the sidelines of the staff going, hey, let's get a run game going. Take some pressure off him. How can we get the run game going? Big fella Cross stays on his feet. Blacks fly. Gets down to the 26-yard line. Cross, the sophomore from Gainesville, Georgia. Holding offense, number 76. 10 yard penalty. We play second down. Brent Qualley. Right here. Watch him now. You can't have that right arm wrapped around the player. John Jansen knows that. That's tough, though, especially when the defender's lower than you are. A late switch offensively. Abdullah replaces Cross for the second down and 13. And that was a great job by the Nebraska offensive line there. They opened a huge hole for Abdullah. Actually, missed a block up front, but Abdullah ran through that and made a nice play. Another flag down. Abdullah to the 20. Now Nebraska had gone until that last drive without having a penalty, and there's a chance this is going to be the third. Chop block. Offense, number 74. 15 yard penalty, we play first down. Mike Maudi. Right here. Nope. That, that, again, that offensive tackle needs to keep his hands off the, the defender when there's a low cut block by an offensive guard. The next lineman cannot put his hands on that defender. That's when they call it. Not the cut part, but when the next guy, the next lineman, gets the hands on the defender as he's going down on the cut. Cornhusker's going in the wrong direction. First down and 25. Abdullah goes down. Tyler Scott with the tackle. 
Second down and long. When it's a tie score like this, Eric, just and you're backed up with a couple penalties, fight for field goal right now. Try to get, try to play game, call it, and to get the field goal. Because that, that will obviously give you the lead. Especially when you're backed up like this. Nebraska playing without Kenny Bell. Armstrong just dives forward, wrapped up by Chance Carter. It'll bring up third down and a whole bunch. Again, they tried a long pass there where you need to get in the field goal range at this point in time. You really had no choice but to throw something shorter here, get down to that 30-yard line to be able to kick a field goal. And Coach Tim Beck's really called a good game today with all the different changes he's had in the offense. That's tough. Armstrong's pass is incomplete. Alonzo Moore can't squeeze it. And what looked like a promising drive turns into a whole bunch of nothing. And that was a good call by, by Tim Beck, the offensive coordinator. He, they would have caught that ball around the 30-yard line, give your field goal kicker a chance. You just you, you got to execute. You know, don't catch the ball. It's a simple throw. Looks like he got his feet tied up. That's a good call. <laughs> Yeah, that's, that's the life of a coordinator right there, Eric. I've been there and done that right there. <laughs> Trying to pin the Wildcats inside their own 10. Ball bounces at the 8 and takes a Wildcat roll. Still, it'll be poor starting field position for Northwestern. They'll have it first down at 10 from the 14. We're all tied at 21 here in Lincoln, Nebraska. State Farm for Auto Home Life and Banking. Get to a better state. BTN Football presented by John Deere. It's a 21 21 tie. Great news for Northwestern. Trayvon Green has returned to the game at the tailback spot. Kane Coulter has him in motion next to him. They give it to Green, trying to get to the edge. Pushed out of bounds at the 20 yard line. For a while, Trayvon Green was out, and that was significant because Northwestern's already lost Stephen Buckley to injury. They've already lost Tony Jones, their best wide receiver, to injury. They need some offensive firepower. They do. Nebraska showed an edge blitz that last play. Should have been a tackle for loss, but they did a nice job getting around the corner. Nebraska's showing it again down here. Green tries the other side. Dies forward. It's going to be short of the first down marker. Josh Banderas with the tackle. It'll bring up third down. Green should have used his speed there to get to the sideline. He had the first down. He thought he could make a move, but he had him beat to the outside. And Green didn't look like he's feeling great right now. He's replaced by Tim Hanrahan. Third down and one. That was two blitzes in a row by Nebraska's defense. See if they show a third here. Here they come. Coulter keeps it. Doesn't get close. He's brought down Randy Gregory and others stop him short of the marker. It'll be fourth down. Three very good defensive calls. All three were blitzes to confuse Kane Coulter in the Northwestern offense. And they timed it out just nice off, on, on the case. Just perfect. Here it is at the top of your screen. And the secret to good blitzing is how you time it out on the cadence of the opponent. Tenth punt for Brandon Williams. Fair catch called for. Esther Camp makes it at the 40-yard line. 36-yard punt, no return. Well, tonight, Michigan State hosting Penn State in a women's volleyball matchup in East Lansing. Coverage starts 8.30 Eastern time. That's tonight on BTN. And BTN to go. A couple of ranked teams. Penn State ranked second in the entire country. Well, Bo Pelini's Nebraska Cornhuskers no longer ranked. Lost last week at Minnesota. Trying to get a win here at home. It's not been easy. A 21-21 tie. Having to play a game without Taylor Martinez. Tommy Armstrong has struggled. Abdullah. 
fortune to get the back of the line of scrimmage. It'll bring up second down. Max Chapman on the tackle. And you have field position here on offense. And you want to take advantage of it because they've had this field position and they just haven't taken advantage of it consistently during the course of the game. Really frustrating for an offensive coordinator when you get this field position and can't make any hay out of it. It's an important drive. Great job by Northwestern's defense getting everybody to the ball. Another chance, Abdullah breaks through that line and gets out to the 47 yard line. It'll bring up third down. What would you trust with Tommy Armstrong right now if you're the play caller right now? You're going to have a third down at four. What's a good play call for Nebraska? I think the option game or some kind of pass off the option look. They, they tried it earlier in the game. Or a, a move, what I call a pocket movement pass. Armstrong goes down. Blown up by Chichi Araguzo. Well, I called it for you, Eric. They didn't run it. <laughs> <laughs> Easy for me up here, though. <laughs> and they were just trying a quarterback run game there to follow that lead blocker, that pulling guard, and Northwestern sniffed that out. That was great, great defense. Eric Guzzo's been pretty darn good, and this is junior season. Excellent player. All over the field. And we've got a flag. Going to be movement against Nebraska. False start. Offense number five. Five-yard penalty. Fourth down. Types of things that just drives head coaches nuts. Penalties like this. He's been calm and composed, though, on the sideline. He knows he has a young team, a lot of different guys in there right now. Tenth total punt of this second half. And it'll go out of bounds close to the 15-yard line. Punting's been good today. Under 46 yards, no return. Under six minutes to play. Don't forget, after this game is over, Dave, Jerry, and Howard will be along for the final drive. They'll bring you all the scores, stories, and highlights from an entire day on the conference. The final drive tonight after our game on BTN. Interested to see uh, Howard and Jerry break down the art of the punt. Had 10 of them <laughs> here in the second half. They're doing their job, though. Uh, both punters are doing their job today. Trayvon Green in the game as the tailback. He's next to Coulter. Coulter can't find anyone open. Takes it himself. Still on his feet out to the 32. He was tripped up. He had a ton of green in front of him. He sure did, Eric. He had a lot of green in front of him. They're lucky they tripped him up. Great play by Kane Coulter. Put the ball in his hand. He'll do this for you. He's, that's a good job by holding on the ball because that Nebraska defender almost stripped it out coming from behind. You don't, you don't often see those guys. Now Simeon is your quarterback. Nobody open. Simeon's going to run. Does his Kane Coulter impersonation and picks up nine yards. Let's go to Dave Revson for a studio update. Eric, thanks. Minnesota was up 35-13 on Indiana, but the Hoosiers have come all the way back. Nate Sudfeld to Cody Latimer. How about 39-35 Indiana? 5.33 to go. Oh, goodness. Thank you, Dave. Didn't see that one come. I guess you can't keep that offense down for the Hoosiers. Indiana has a right offense to come back in a game. The perfect offense. Coulter back in at quarterback. Second and one. Keeps it himself. That may have been a busted play. He looked to his right. Nobody was there. Well, he's looking for the bubble screen outside, but Nebraska was in tight man coverage. So it was, it was a good decision by Kane not to throw it out there in oh, the backfield. It was a mix-up in the backfield. Good job by Kane. When you teach a quarterback when the running back goes the wrong way, you, you become the running back. Just follow, follow the hole. Just know where your hole is and go in the hole. Good job by Kane there. Coulter getting a, an equipment fix. He's replaced by Simeon. Man coverage by Nebraska. Simeon goes down. Avery Moss continues his big day. Another blitz is really 
really hurt this Northwestern offense. Coming off the edge, the same edge blitz. Just missed protection there. Didn't slide enough with the protection up front to pick up all those. They probably had to slide to the left instead of sliding to the right. Becomes a guessing game. Northwestern has allowed more sacks than any other team in the conference. They had a good run mix there. They should have stayed with that. Uh-oh. And a timeout called now by Northwestern. Timeout, Northwestern. They're first. This will be a full media timeout. It is getting late here in Lincoln. A 21-21 tie, just 335 remaining. Our Duluth trading hardest working player. Coming off the bench, Trayvon Green, the junior, has been really good. Three touchdowns all in the first half, 150 yards rushing. Just when Northwestern really needed it. Picked up the slack when, when Buckley went out. Really had a nice game. Really a, a, a good mix of plays with him, him and Coulter all day long. He has over half of Northwestern's total yards in today's game. Simeon to throw on second and 20. Pocket collapses. Throws it up for grabs. Incomplete. A flag is down right where Simeon is standing. Call the hold. It didn't, it didn't look like a quarterback hit or anything. Holding. I think Pat Fitzgerald wanted a face mask. Penalty's declined. There's a third down. Matt Fitzgerald wanted a face mask. They wanted a face mask. That's what. Yeah. Okay, so Nebraska they declined the penalty. <laughs> Goodness. <laughs> if you wanted one there. Now they declined because it's third and long. You have a third and extra long here. Northwestern 0 for their last 10, converting third downs, and this one won't be easy. That's third and 20. That's why you decline it. Simeon right there. He had a he had a man open. Good scheme. Good pass scheme there. And he just needs to get that ball down. His elbow's not not high enough. Get the elbow up. Keep your shoulders taller when you throw a football down the field. He was down too low in his stance and his elbow dropped. That's why that ball sailed. Brandon Williams to boot it away. Another fair catch called for. Oof, dangerous play for Westerkamp. Punters have done a great job today placing the football. 45 yard punt, no return. 316 left to play in regulation. Wow. They say he's got great hands. Best hands on the team. But he made that a little bit more difficult than it needed to be. These two teams always play close games. Three points two years ago, a point last year. Last year, Taylor Martinez and Nebraska, they overcame their largest fourth quarter deficit to win in program history. They're down by 12 in the fourth quarter, and they still won it in Evanston. Now, without Taylor Martinez, trying to work with Tommy Armstrong to get this done. Armstrong's first down run is productive. that will bring up second down and short. We have three minutes left to play. Good job by Tommy just getting down and protecting himself a little bit. They give it to Abdullah. He's got the first down. What should be the tempo for this offense right now for Nebraska? Well, you still have a lot of time left, so you don't have to get in such a hurry. I would call it medium tempo, not too slow, but you don't have to go super fast either. And there's different types of tempo. Usually teams have three different types. Use that middle tempo. Armstrong wants to throw. Receiver wasn't looking, and Armstrong is down. Oh, he took a hit from Araguzo. This has been a well-played defensive game. Eric, not a lot of big plays. Both teams have been giving up big plays. Not today so far. Good job of staying off the quarterback and not getting a penalty there by Araguzo. Smart play. 
His obvious passing downs haven't been positive for Nebraska. Armstrong throws an interception. Northwestern's got the football. Scott inside the 10, down to the 8. Wow. The fourth interception thrown by Nebraska. Yeah, he just had to short arm it a little bit. He didn't have total vision. Time out for injured player. Got rid of it a little too quick, uh, quicker than he probably wanted to because of the pressure. Life of a quarterback's not easy, Eric. Not easy when you have games like this. Jeremiah Searles is the man down now for Nebraska. Three interceptions, the last eight passes thrown for Armstrong. And, and pocket passing is really not his strength yet. He hasn't learned that yet. But they had no choice. They had to, they had to use a pocket pass. It was the defensive end, Tyler Scott, dropping back into coverage. Armstrong didn't expect him to be there. Didn't expect him to be there. Just about to say that. Usually he's rushing the passer. That was a great call by defensive coordinator Mike Hankwitz of Northwestern to drop him at the right time. So now Northwestern, they've got the ball point blank range, haven't scored a point since the second quarter. They've got it first down and goal from the seven. You, you, you play smart. You like to use some clock here and run the ball. You know you have three in your back pocket. Don't make major mistakes down here. Coulter spun down at the one. You might as well let this guy score, right? You almost want to when you're Nebraska. Just let him score and give yourself some time on the clock. For injured player. It's Avery Moss. He was making the tackle from behind on Coulter and then caught some friendly fire. Unless your defense is a great goal line type defense, you almost want to let them score here. So you get the ball back with time, okay? Think, you know, unless you're really... That was the safety, Corey Cooper, who came in to finish off the tackle and actually got more of his own guy, Moss, than oh. he did Coulter. That was the big play that Moss had back in the third quarter. That's actually only been the only touchdown we've had here in this second half. And it was a defensive touchdown by Avery Moss. So after the injury timeout, the clock is moving once again, and Northwestern's not in any hurry at all to break oh. the huddle on the sideline. They're going to try and use all this clock on Nebraska. They know they have three points, or possible three, I should say. So this is going to take the game clock down to about a minute 30. These are tough decisions for Nebraska. Just try and rise up on a, on a goal line stand. Take a look at the timeouts. It's on the scorebook, left-hand side of your screen, Northwestern. Those two yellow slashes, and Nebraska two timeouts as well. Charge timeout, Northwestern, their second. Northwestern uses their second timeout. timeout. It would be smart, at least from my perspective, if Northwestern actually didn't score a touchdown, if they just took a knee, at least for a little bit, burn up some clock if Nebraska's not going to call a timeout. Around the conference, this one has gone final. Congratulations to Mark D'Antonio's Spartans. Wow. As they win convincingly over Michigan. That Michigan State defense is pretty good. <laughs> Shut Michigan down to six points. Wow. With as good of a, a kicker as Northwestern has in Jeff Budzine. That might be the strategy right now. That's, that's good strategy. They can use their time, but can't, you know, with Nebraska's two timeouts, though, they're going to have to get it in. That's the only difference there is they have two timeouts. So they can, you know, take it a knee and 
they can stop the clock with plenty of time left. So when you're Northwestern right now, Eric, you got to try to punch it in. Green stopped at the two. And now a timeout called by the Cornhuskers. Now this is playing right in, this is what Nebraska wants. Playing right in Nebraska's hands, okay? Use the timeout. Judge timeout. Just in Nebraska. case we can get a goal this line second. stand here. This will be a 30 second timeout. Holding the three, we'll have time on the, the clock, clock to for a possible drive, a field goal drive, preferably a touchdown drive. At least they'll have time. Smart, smart play by Bo Pelini there. Good strategy here. They won't have any timeouts. Um, they, they possibly might have one, but he's using his timeouts for that time for his offense. Now what he needs is a goal line stand here. He needs to hold him right here. Wouldn't this be special for Northwestern? Dealing with all the injuries that they're dealing with. No Venrick Mark, no Mike Trumpy, Stephen Buckley leaving the game early. Warren Long not even in uniform. So really down to just one tailback available on the roster. Right. Now, if, if they don't get in here, you almost have to use your timeout if, for Nebraska again just to save that time on the back end for your offense. Defensive goal line stand there after that big play down to the near the goal line by Kane. Two plays earlier. That's a nice job. They have both edges secured. In Nebraska. They're patient on the on the corner. Didn't bite. That was a that was a naked bootleg all the way. No one's going to go out for a pass. There. That was Coulter on a fake and trying to fool everybody and get to the outside, but it didn't work. Now, this is not going to be a great angle for Jeff Budzine. Oh, a great strategy by Bo Pelini. Calling that last time out, leaving some time for your offense on the back end of this game. And at least he'll know after this possible field goal. Long he... snapper's Pat Hickey. The holder is the punter, Brandon Williams. And Jeff Budzine, 13 out of 15 on the year. Kind of a tough angle on that deep right hash. Not a long kick, just a 21-yarder. And he got it. That was not a pretty thing, but it goes through. That was tight. Now you have some time for Nebraska. You'll have a minute 20, but we don't have any timeouts. Do you start thinking about putting Ron Kellogg in the game? He's the better thrower, and they need to throw the football right now. The run game won't help you with no timeouts with a minute 20 unless you can get a big play get first downs when you get first downs those are like many timeouts the clock will stop and that's the way offense that's what I always used to talk to offense about first downs are many timeouts don't panic and now how big does that missed field goal in the first half by Nebraska move it was a 48 yarder that actually hit the right upright two inches to the left and it'd be a 24 24 tie right now in games like this Eric they always add up those missed opportunities. But there's been a lot of those in the course of the game for both teams. Amir Abdullah back deep to receive this kickoff. So glad you could join us if you just watching the Indiana-Minnesota game. We've got a good one here. 120 left to play. 24-21 Northwestern lead. And Nunwa's going to bring it out of the end zone. And Inunua 
not able uh, to get to the 20. Maybe not a great decision. It takes time off the clock, and he loses yardage. Would have been at the 25 with a touchback. Not a good decision there. Now, if you're just joining us, this was the 21-yard field goal by Jeff Budzine a moment ago. Ooh. A 21-yard field goal breaking a 21-21 tie. And Northwestern leading by three. See if we get Kellogg, Kellogg in the game here after Tommy Stone some interceptions. It is indeed Ron Kellogg the third in the shotgun formation. Trying to become a hero on a Saturday afternoon. Quick pitch and catch Abdullah out of the backfield. That'll stop the clock temporarily because of the first down. Nebraska, they don't have any timeouts remaining. Good check down. Many timeout when you get the first down. Still time. Plenty of time. Good Another check. check down. This time Abdul is going to run out of bounds. That'll stop the clock. Good check down. Stops the clock. Think boundary routes here. But if you're Northwestern, you want to play cover two. Two deep safeties with the corners rolled up to take away those boundary routes. You have two deep safety right now. Kellogg throws low and behind the intended receiver, Alonzo Moore. Nebraska trying to rally here, playing without Kenny Bell, one of the better receivers in the conference, leaving the game in the first half with an injury. Throw it away. Get rid of the football. You, you have four downs here. It's, so you still have two more. Colin Ellis down on the field. Ellis with one of four Northwestern interceptions this afternoon. It's all clock here, Eric, and not downs. We still have two downs to go. See you down here. Yeah, ankle just caught. Got leg whipped a little bit there. This is something we've seen a lot of today. Northwestern players down. Coming on the road. Missing a lot of significant players to begin with. And dealing with significant injury this afternoon. Yet still Northwestern leading this game. With 51 seconds left to play. Trying to win here in Lincoln. For the second time in three years. Really gutty performance by both teams. With all the lineup changes they've had on both sides of the ball for both teams, this is hard coaching now. Nothing smooth today. Third down and seven. Northwestern playing a soft cover four. Trying to protect the, that boundary. for a significant loss. Max Chapman got him. Got to go now. Got to go. No he, timeouts. It is fourth down now. Now you got to get your wits about you. Here's a, here's a nice sack. Uh, just missed block it up front. Get your wits about you. You got to get past the yeah, I guess 16 yards here. Fourth and 15. Kellogg's going to have to make a play. And his pass complete, but that's going to be... Seconds left for a moment. Clock it. You got to clock it. Clock it right here. They're going to take a long take a look. look at it. The ruling on the field is that the runner got a first down. The previous play is under further review. What a great effort. And you don't know, like your quarterback to throw it underneath like this, Eric. But he's the right guy to get the ball to if you're going to do it. Abdullah, just terrific effort. And, and Tommy really didn't have much of a choice. But that's just a great effort by Abdullah. Wow. The heart and soul of that Nebraska offense. So Nebraska able to regroup here for a moment until this review is completed. Remember, they need a field goal to tie. They have no timeouts remaining. They need to advance After this football. The, review, the passer was behind the line of scrimmage. 
The runner did obtain a first down. The ruling is confirmed. You've got to have a play ready. The clock will roll. You've got to have a play ready right now. Snap it quick. We call this whistle. In other words, when the referee steps away from the ball, snap the ball. And they get it off quickly. Another short pass. They're not going very far, very fast. Birch with the catch. 16 seconds left. Remember, they just have to get in the field goal range. You have about three plays left with 16 seconds. About three left. Kellogg can't afford to get sacked. Another catch. And getting out of bounds goes Birch. That stops the clock at 11 ticks remaining. So you have about two plays, maybe a third. But they need to get some significant yards. They, they need do. to get at least to the 30. You have two plays left. If you think in six seconds of play, usually. And the clock stopped before the ball was snapped. They'll reset it to 11 seconds. Please reset the clock to 11 seconds. Receiver Birch went out of bounds, so the clock will stop until the snap of this football. You need a bigger throw here. First down throw to get that field goal. Kellogg steps up. Has a man incomplete. Almost intercepted on the deflection. Four seconds left. And he had him. That would have been enough to get in the field goal range. That would have been enough. It's a nice play by Tom, Tommy. Uh, I mean, uh, Ron Kellogg in the pocket. Found his man. First down of in field goal range. Got to make the play. Nunwa has made huge plays today, but he can't hold on to that football. It's now four seconds remaining at Hail Mary time. Hail Mary time. Last play. Judge timeout, Northwestern. Their third and final timeout. This will be a 30-second timeout. Northwestern trying to do the unthinkable. Wow. Come to Lincoln, Nebraska two straight times and get out of town with wins. And Northwestern has lost four straight games, by the way. Right. And all banged up, too. They've had significant injuries. Really, to come in here at this stage, again, like you said, Eric, going 0 4, needing a win on the road in Lincoln with a banged up football team. What a great, gutty performance. Kenny Bell played briefly in the first quarter, but that was it. A non-factor today. We haven't been told about his injury, but he has not played over the last three quarters. Neither team has a timeout remaining. This should be the final play of the game unless there's the defensive penalty. Look for a hook and ladder. Hook and lateral. Got to get rid of it. Throw it up there. Kellogg's throw. It's going to be tipped and caught. in the back far enough that allowed Western Camp to get behind there. Wow. 
That's why you play to the whistle. And Northwestern doesn't learn their lesson. A year ago against Michigan, they were defeated on a last-minute Hail Mary. And again it happens. Do you believe that Ron Kellogg has saved the day and possibly the season for Nebraska? He'll go down as legendary in a great placement tradition here. <laughs> they will remember this forever. What a play. The old Hail Mary. Soak it all in, Ron. John Jansen is in the middle of that mess. John, take it away. Coach Fellini, tell me about that last play of the game. You know, I mean, I, I saw a guy kind of flash out of nowhere at the end and make the catch. And, you know, that was a heck of a game. No, you know what? In a game like this, I thought both those teams played their tails off. There, there wasn't a loser in this one. I give them a lot of credit, and that's a class program. Your guys have fought all game long. How important was this victory for you this year? I think it was huge. Every week's big. And you know what? Our guys didn't give up. They just kept playing, and they showed a lot of character. All right. Thanks, Coach. Thanks. Jordan Westerkamp's first career touchdown reception, and it comes on a Hail Mary to end the game. They had a three-man rush, which allowed Ron to ha have some time. Just throw it up there as far as you can. And Westerkamp snuck behind and kept his eyes on the tip. And made a play on the Hail Mary. Westerkamp's going to keep that football for a while. I would, too. Legends are born here in Memorial Stadium in Lincoln. There's two right there, Kellogg and Westerkamp. We have one offensive touchdown in the second half, and it comes on a Hail Mary. On a Hail Mary. And if you're Northwestern, you play the whale of a game with a banged-up squad. You're 0-4 coming in, 0-5 going out. Had a chance to win at the end. That's, that's tough. But I know Coach Fitzgerald will get them to regroup. And like Coach Pelini said, you know, two winners here. I mean, to lose a game like that, that's, you can get past that quick because they played well today. Northwestern played well today. And the senior walk-on quarterback, Ron Kellogg, he goes 91 yards in a minute 20 with no timeouts and just rips the heart out of Pat Fitzgerald and the Wildcats. There it is. Oh. Just stuns you as a coach. He knew it too. That's why you got to keep playing to the whistle, Eric. Keep playing. Ron Kellogg's never have to get a pay for a cheeseburger in Lincoln again <laughs> in his life. Let's go back down to John. John, take it away. Walk me through the last play of the game. Yeah, you know, it's the play we have. It's a, pretty much just a last resort play. Throw it as far as he can in the end zone. Somebody tried to tip it, and, you know, it's, it worked out perfect. You know, Quincy had a good tip. He tipped it backwards. I was right there. You know, we, we, uh, we ran that a couple times in our walkthrough. In case we had to do it, and we, we had to, and it worked out. And it was just, I was real fortunate you know, to have that play at the end of the game there. Is that ball going to make the trophy case? Oh, absolutely. Thanks a lot. Biggest catch in the young career of Jordan Wester Camp. He's a Chicago kid, and he takes down the team from the Chicagoland area. Nebraska, they survive. They win by a score of 27 to 24. Sure hope you enjoyed it as much as we did calling it. For my partners, John Jansen and Chuck Long, I'm Eric Collins. Now let's send you to Dave, Jerry, and Howard in our Chicago studio for the final drive.